Is it too late to go back and tell Nebula that I loved her? Oh, back. You okay? I'll be fine. I just don't like the feeling of this place. It's all right. I'm right here. Hmm. Looks like the barriers are down. So, where is Rowan? My guess? Probably the tallest tower. Come on, this way. If it isn't the heroes of Mythos, coming to stop me from ending this pitiful world, how entirely predictable. <laughs> and here I thought we would at least catch you by surprise. Don't be ridiculous. I only anticipated your interference. It's only natural that a wasp would defend its hive from destruction. But I will admit that I'm flattered by the reception. So many vessels gathered in one place. Only to fall to an eldritch god. Eldritch god? You're not that scary. Sometimes the scariest villain is not the monster lurking under your bed, but the monster that looks just like you. I've worked too hard to be stopped by a group of childish outlanders. Then why don't we go ahead and end this chapter? I'm getting sick and tired of the premise! Riley, now! I owe you one. I've got your back, Cam. Glad to hear it. Now it's my turn. Dan, do you have that resistance charm ready? I have no idea, so let's just cross our fingers. Justin, let's go. <laughs> How does that feel, you mother? Fucker. He just keeps flying around! We can't reach him! Mm -hmm. We'll give him a reason to land. Mario, do you have that cloud spell? Uh, I still don't know why you asked me to do this! Don't worry about it. I have an idea. Fortunately, there's not a lot of this in the air. All the darkness in the air is keeping the Viz from regenerating! That doesn't matter, though. I only need a little. Holy shit, that worked! It 
it's not over yet. Chris, Sin, take the shot! It's like we're not even affecting him. He's not even reacting to any of our attacks. Damn it. Just keep your heads down. I'll fucking gut him. Ha! <laughs> What's the matter? You got pretty quiet all of a sudden, Rowan. You're beginning to test my patience, Vessels. Then it's a good thing I was just a distraction. Now, Dan! I didn't think that would actually work. Detonation charm, baby. Let's go! Don't celebrate too early. He's not dead yet. It's the final fight, and Swan still didn't bring my gun. Is that really your top priority right now? That really doesn't matter. Just aim for him when he's in the sky. He keeps dodging! This is really annoying. He can't dodge everything, right? He's not a god. I, I mean, he is, but uh, he's really bad. Just keep giving everyone else an opening. Never done something like this before, but let's give it a try! Stay still. Got him. I mean, yeah, but it's not doing much, Lily. <laughs> Just give it a second. Watch and learn, Ovec. She used Aviticus to freeze her arrows. Nice, Lily. This is your time to strike. Go. Just like old times, right? <laughs> Too bad it might be our last. Don't think about that for now. Focus on the fight. Oh, come on. A little banner in the face of death never killed you. <laughs> Let's finish him off, everyone! You have no idea how long I've waited to do this! Enough of this. I believe you finally overstayed your welcome, Vessels. It was entertaining at first, but now you've crossed the line! A long time ago, following the demise of the Archangels, the goddess, Unity, created a new race of creatures that wouldn't fall to darkness. A race was neither light nor dark at its core. She called it Humanity. They sprung up from nothingness, building their empire from the ashes of their predecessors in Unity's name. Religion became a significant part of daily life and prayer was commonplace. 
Humanity would pray to Unity every waking hour to thank her for the gift of life. In exchange for our dedication, Unity walked among her people and gave humanity gifts of tremendous celestial power. However, for a divine being who preaches the importance of unification, I quickly came to realize that not all humans were created equal. I never knew my parents. There isn't a time I can recall their faces in my life. I've stood alone against the world all this time, starved and ignored. I did what was necessary to survive, stealing loaves of bread, swiping discarded books, drinking water from fountains or rivers. That was all I could do. But obviously, that lifestyle could not last forever. I was caught, and for my crimes I paid the ultimate price. My right to exist was torn away, and I was forced into servitude. I became a slave to Unity's perfect society. I was worked to the point of exhaustion, and if I made even a single mistake, I would be beaten or branded. As I grew, I learned to grip my teeth and bear it. The light of the goddess sickened me. I came to realize just how little we mattered to Unity. She believed herself to be righteous and holy for giving humanity the world, but in reality, she was simply granting power for the wealthiest, the most devoted of her followers. They were the ones that tormented me, and yet they never faced the consequences. I turned my back on the light entirely. I abandoned it as it had abandoned me. That was when a voice began to call to me. My very shadow started moving on its own, morphing its shape to speak to me. It whispered lost knowledge into my ears and taught me about magic so dark that I couldn't help but be compelled. That was when I began my plot. The final gift Unity gave to humanity was known as the Soul Stone. It is said that the stone would allow the souls of the dead to pass through it and enter the heavens to mingle with their afterlives furthermore. This artifact was collected by the head of the chapel, who declared a gathering at dusk to thank Unity for her gift and bestow its blessings upon the fallen. I took this gathering as the perfect opportunity to take my revenge. I stole the gemstone from its pedestal, avoiding guards and priests alike as I struggled to keep it within my grasp. At first, it rejected my energy, but I found my own ways to force it to cooperate. With dark magic, I corrupted the soul stone, turning it into the perfect weapon. I slammed it into my head and began using its power to steal the souls of every being within the civilization. By daybreak, the Empire had fallen, and I was the last one standing. I took back power over my own life and made my vow. I would destroy this world, Perfection is a lie given to us by worthless gods who couldn't care less about our suffering. Light was a mistake. Order is the reason why so many are cast out by society. I will ascend with the power of a god and fix this world. I shall recreate it and allow darkness to overtake it once more and start it anew. I'm done with order and I'm sick of false promises of the light. I am the savior of Rem, and I will do whatever I must to destroy it. Look at you all, battered and beaten at my feet. You've hardly left a scratch on me. Oh shit, no 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 no. Damn it! That soul stone! We can't get close to him. I've worked far too hard to be bested by the likes of you. I've survived a millennia for this moment, allying myself with power-hungry fools who believe any lie they hear. But now, finally, my story has reached its conclusion. You're right, Vessels. I'm sick of this chapter's premise. It's time for darkness to create this world anew. It's time for- uh, The gem is 
in his forehead. Get it now before he ends it, damn it. Ugh. Candy! <laughs> the Soul Stone. No, no. Die! The Citadel. It's sinking. We, we gotta get out of here. I don't think we have time. We're going down. Then we're going down together. 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 <laughs> together. 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 Together.
Let's go, game. Oh, nice. It's looking oh for a god. source. Hold on. It's trying. Oh, it's oh trying. Oh my god. Minecraft. Oh, hold on. Over. Minecraft. Oh my god. There we go. Holy shit. Folks. Yeah, if you guys didn't see, we got merch unlocked. We got Skylightrem.co. Check it out. We got merch. Yay. Go check it out. And also, you our new sport. backstage app is up there. So check it out. Fill it out if you want. And uh, yeah, it, it's over, Swan. It's over. We're a creative swan. Oh, wait. I hear fucking Fatur. Hold on. Bro, did you forget I still had Fatur. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. Forgot I 100% did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Folks. Holy shit. My chat's like, damn, like, you flew! Yeah, oh my god, that chicken. was so fun to do. Like, honestly, with the cinematic, just props to everyone. Because, like, mm -hmm. I did some of the uh, scenes for it. Um, Marshy did some. Candy did some. That Like, the entire Rowan monologue stuff, that was, like, the, mo the Rowan backstory bit. That was all Candy. Mm -hmm. And then Kat did the amazing still shots of, like, all the NPCs and all that, so. Those still shots hurt my soul. Oh, you guys cried? Oh, it's okay. We've been, like... We've been accepting it over We've time. We've been in Holy a state, shit. guys. We've been in a state. Oh my god. We Holy left shit. behind a world hopefully better yeah. than we Holy came to shit. it in. But now you can sport the merch from us. <laughs> yeah. We, left, we totally left this behind. You can have Lion or Library. <laughs> you can have Blood Oath, Vanguard, the Crystals of Rowan. You can have a lot like, of stuff. Oh my god. I'm... But I just can't believe it. I can't either. It's over. Uh, it's I, been I a journey. Can't. It's been so much. Like we we worked so hard, guys, to get out this thing, and like all of the creators and backstage behind this project, it would not have been possible without mm -hmm. any of you guys. Hey, it's okay. It's okay, guys. Don't worry. So, well, which by the way. We um, I'm gonna be ex explaining stuff with Swan for a little bit. I'm gonna be doing my own little personal Q&A thing for my Twitter. If you haven't seen that, I've uh, replied to that already. I'll get that done privately. And then, um, I will be ending my stream and rating Rex. The official final Q&A will most likely only be on Rex's, but there might be other creators streaming it, but I will be over on Rex's stream for that. Oh my fucking god. What is trying to- I'm trying to pull up another tab so I can pull up Google Docs! Oh my god! Everything <laughs> stop! <laughs> My well, Google Chrome is crashing. Bruh, get Opera GX. It's better. Hold on. It's actually not. Re just close. Close. I need to close my stuff, but. Close. It's trying. Oh, Hold on. Oh my Task god. Task manager. I... Task manager. Just... Task manager, save me. Found that this six months ago. Now I cried. Close because program. It ends. Well, just make sure to go check out the Q&A uh, that we're going to be doing uh, later with Rex and them. Uh, make sure to check it out. We're going to be answering all questions. Mm -hmm. Every single one that you guys have put out. So just, I highly recommend going to check it but out what there. what we're going to start and, with is talking about some arcs. Yeah. Specifically, the one that I was in with Swan. That's what we're going to go about right now. We're going to talk which, about the infiltration oh, arc, which I'm pulling here. up a Google document of all the characters and all the planning and everything. If you want... Do you want to go inside and discuss it? I, there's this nice office like Premier News if you want to oh, go chat. Oh yeah, in yeah, yeah. Why don't we? Why let's don't we go? go that's the go perfect chat. place, I think, for such a discussion. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, head down there. You can just keep these yeah. on, so you don't have to worry about the NPC lag. Yeah, we are Holy not. <laughs> we're not dealing with that right now. We are not dealing with that. We are just going to TP. Okay, I'm in the office. I'm Premier sitting in the chair. Premier office. I have to be you now. All right, folks. <laughs> So in the beginning of this arc, you won't believe how the concept of this entire arc started. The way this yeah. started was we wanted a blue crew arc. That's what we called it. Because <laughs> a lot yeah. of us here in Mythos, you know, I was the first one really, but a lot of us here have some good amount of blue. Now you might be yeah. saying, Swan, not every blue person was in this arc. Where was River? You know, where was Justin? Well, Justin was a part of this arc a little bit. He was meant to be more. Yeah, he was, he was meant bit. to be in more. But due to time constraints, which now you know the reason why we had those time oh. constraints, he was for today. Um... Yeah, so just blue crew arc. We had some we had some difficulties, didn't we, Cam, oh, with this arc? Oh my god, so many difficulties. We had to rewrite a whole part. Well, no, Justin I, has I his think... coat. He has his coat. So we counted that too. See, Cam, her coat's blue. She's blue yeah. crew. If it yeah. was just off of hair, it wouldn't it it's would be peacekeepers, a few, peacekeepers far is blue and all that stuff. 
Mm -hmm. But, like, we had to rewrite this arc, like, multiple times for us to get the final result. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, you see, right, there was meant to be more to this arc, but we had to make cuts to fit it in in time. And we nearly didn't. We were down to the deadline. Like, Um, literally, the last day was, like, the arc deadline Mm -hmm. for Mythos. We We were were thrown several loops in this arc. Oh, my God. So, so many. The first one that made us do the most rewrites was the, um, one of the fellas that was supposed to be in the arc ended up departing. You know, no, no yeah. hard feelings, but they ended up departing. So if you look at the poster and you've, you've watched the VOD, VOD, you'll end up knowing that that was Kathy. She was originally supposed yeah. to be in the arc. She was the purple person on the poster. Um, so we ended up, that was actually fortunately the most convenient time for her to depart. Yeah. But it was completely unexpected to us. That was that was a hard hitting thing. We were like such short notice, so we're like scrambling. We're like, oh no! Um, But we made it work. We did. And uh, you guys got to see some amazing, amazing characters. I'm not gonna lie. Some of the story parts turned out even a little better with the rewrite. So it's almost a little good that we had to rewrite because it was even it was better. Can I also just say too, um, props for Cat also for helping with this art because. Cat helped with the writing a lot as mm-hmm. well. Like, holy shit. Cat was, like, the main backstage, like, helped at least 50-50 or, like, around for the writing. Cam, at some point, had to, you know, put on some writing pants and yep. also assist because, yeah, basically, originally there was going to be two writers. There was going to be me and Kathy, but with Kathy's departure, there was only me. So I was like, Cat, I literally cannot do this ro- alone. Because the thing about this arc that's a little different than most other arcs is that most arcs, we try to stay together, right? We mainly try to stay in at least the same area, right? We only try to, you know, we don't split off that much. But for this arc, our each of our perspectives were, like, at least 90% alone. So yeah. that meant we essentially had to write about three to four streams in one. So the yeah, first like, stream we did, it literally got to 115 pages because we were trying to dialogue all of it. And then we realized we couldn't do that. Which we broke the record at that time for the most mythos dialogue written. And then Candy very quickly took back her title. <laughs> yeah, she wanted it back so bad. So, yeah. <laughs> but- Indeed. However, um, then continuing, we, we learned a little bit better, right? On the backstage side of things, you'll notice oh, that we, we ended up streaming, like, all of our perspectives. Like, it maybe have been the same stream, but we streamed them at different times. That's mm-hmm. the only reason we actually managed to do this arc, because we couldn't generate 115 pages of dialogue for every stream. It literally killed which, us the first time. Which props to all the backstage that helped us with this. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't been able to do this without you. You guys are fucking phenomenal. Indeed. So instead, though, with the recording like that, I also could help backstage. Kat, uh, you know, could be able to type for everyone. Because here's the thing. Half the time when we're typing as a character, like, in-game, you know, someone, someone's having to do that. Those usually aren't pre-generated lines. So that actually saves us a lot of time. So given that Kat and I were now free to do that, and from my perspective, Kat now had the ability to do that, that freed us and saved us a lot of dialogue and time. But moving away a little bit from the backstage part, let's talk about the story aspect. Should we talk about how it was originally going to be? <sighs> oh my god. The <laughs> god. The young us trying to figure out this arc fully. That was um oh, that was definitely but like originally when we were planning this, we didn't even plan on having Primunio involved. Yeah, no, that was a bit of a yeah. into the steps thing. Actually, Elimination, we weren't even gonna be in it. None of us yeah, were elimination going to wasn't get even a thing into at that elimination. Time. No, that was actually due to we were planning out the arc and I was having a little bit of trouble. Um, I will admit that I think um, you know, Cam, you were also the idea person, but I think I put it into like structure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I put it into structure. So I was like here sitting in a call, d- d- yapping away at some poor soul for three hours as I sorted out my brain. <laughs> at least I could say I got the props of coming up with the fucking Lion Dell 2. Yeah, no, Cam made me Thor. With the lightning. Cam axe. made I am me so Thor. happy about that. Like, we had that approved. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> it was so great. It was so good. So, I loved it. We pretty much, um, elimination you know rex was talking about she's like well you know it's edict why not and it's like wait fuck if we get into elimination that opens a lot of doors because we didn't want to do a lock-in arc we didn't want to do like because otherwise we were going to be locked in the entire time 
So we needed some way to reasonably be let out of this facility. But this facility is an info hub, right? It's so, you know, it's supposed to be secure and it wouldn't make sense for them to just let everyone that has access to sensitive information go free. So, lo and behold, originally it was going to be Kathy that was actually going to get us all into information. Or not in, into information, into the elimination crew. Yep. Because Kathy was originally, um... Gonna she be was originally our, info. Uh, information. Yeah, she was yeah, originally, she was originally be info. Yeah, you know how Medea was on the info side of things? Well, that was actually, unfortunately, very hard to write for, because that's kind of boring. There's only so much you can do in info. They, little, they literally decode papers. So, yeah, we could yeah. shower her in knowledge, but there wasn't much else we could do. So then the idea of elimination was like, oh, we can make her elimination. And we actually had this whole plot where Cam was meant to die. And that did make it into the arc. Um... Where Cam yeah. was, like, they were, like, trying to get rid of her, pretty much. But originally, what was supposed to happen was that Kathy was told, you know, everyone on the group that was transferring in thought that Kathy was information. Except Kathy was pulled aside at some point and told, hey, your actual job is to kill Cam. No, so, it's like, you know what you have to do. You know your mission. That was the well, original yeah, no, way of telling she was, she was already told beforehand. Hi, Tori. The person we're talking that, infiltration. Mm-hmm. Basically, Kathy was filling in for this person, right? But this person had already been told that her mission was to kill Cam. So we show up the first day ready to get our papers, and Kathy gets pulled aside, and it's like, hey, remember your mission. And so Kathy's like, what mission? Oh, no. So pretty much Kathy (laughs) starts off with an issue where she has to figure out what supposed mission she has to keep her cover. And so she has all those hoops to jump through. So she's playing this dangerous game of trying to figure things out, and she'd be dealing directly with Charlie. And I know one of you really likes charlie in my chat um so it was a really it was a really great time um and oh, actually so instead of ghosty getting captured at the end it was actually meant to be kathy and that was actually meant to be because of medea sabotage um and the reason for that is medea doesn't like kathy for particular reasons because medea pretty much viewed kathy as a threat to me to swan now Swan, um, why would Medea care so much? Well, you may say, oh yeah, because they're friends. It was because Medea didn't want anyone getting in the way of her true objective, actually. Um, but you haven't, if you have not watched my perspective, um, I'll let you do that. We'll talk about that later, though, because that's a me thing. But moving on, <sighs> let's move away then from that. Let's talk about how things were changed, right? So, one of the proudest parts, I think, of the rewrite was my... I feel like this was a genius, like, stroke for Ghosty's character, right? And we unfortunately couldn't emphasize this as much because Ghosty was really meant to be given a chance to, like, explain herself during the the finale. finale. However, Ghosty literally got grounded the original day we were going to do it. Yeah, like, she- got grounded, guys. We still have not heard from Ghosty. She's still grounded, guys. So- And it's so sad. The reason why in the cinematic, the finale cinematic, that Ghosty isn't talking- it's because we have not heard from Ghosty, so we're assuming she is still grounded. So yeah, no, we worked the so because it was so sad. We literally, it, it was so tragic. We ended up being able to make it work, thankfully, because otherwise I didn't know what we were gonna do. Um, yeah. So fortunately, like if it had to be someone, Ghosty technically was the person because I could, in a way, you know, she's just unconscious from whatever they did to her that we don't know. So you know that that ended up working out. However, it is my proudest moment. To think, you know, Ghosty's a jo- joyful, you know, seemingly doesn't take things as seriously character, Little right? Nugget. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't really straight off the bat expect her to think, this isn't going my way. I can't control this situation. I need to do something about it. Because she pretty much looked at this situation. She wanted to save the people, the prisoners of the info hub. And, but doing so would potentially put Medea and us at danger because we didn't want to pull out. And Ghosty was kind of thinking, the longer we stay here, there's even a greater ritualist. If they capture Cam and Swan, that's going to be really bad. And especially for Medea, too. The more at risk they put themselves, and they're not going to, you know, pull out of this mission on their own. I have to make them. And so she thought to herself, how do I make them? And her thought was, if I get captured, they will be forced to rescue me. And so she pulls off this ingenious plan where she writes letters to all of our allies, the, this secret, you know, letter, and then she, you know, she makes sure they all escape. She comes back, and then she pretty much barges in and ensures that we know that she's been caught. Thanks for coming and out. And all of it happens. But she also made sure that we were set up with enough stuff to, like, make sure we could get the suspicion taken off of us. She made a deal. She, like, 
you know, Asta was trying to argue, like, no, it's only me, I'm just, you know, she tried to play up almost her, like, seemingly, not stupidity, but, like, her, her nature, right? And so I yeah. think that's one of the most genius things that I came up with for Ghosty. Because it's just, it's so good, right? You wouldn't expect that of this character, but it just really shows that there's more to her. There's more behind that. My absolute favorite thing. Other than, of course, um, why don't we talk about the deaths? Oh my god, I remember writing, like, um, the basis for, um, what was it? What's his name again? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, which one was it? Tom? Yeah, Tom. Wait, no, I didn't write Tom's. I think it was oh, a shit. Was Dan. It, Dan's? it was Dan's. It was, it was Dan's. Dan's. I wrote Dan's dialogue not, not for Not Vessel Ghosty. Dan, um, but the yeah. other Dan. Character. The character from Infiltration Dan. I remember writing that, and I'm just like, there's there's sometimes the parts as a writer when you just get a little bit of joy writing this stuff, because you know that's going to hit people in the feels. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when I did that, it was going to hit Ghosty in the feels so so very hard, which it did. So mm -hmm. I feel so proud of that. Now let's talk about the planned deaths and which ones just came about, because when we started this arc, right, we, I maybe had one and a half roadmaps fully fleshed out other than Cam at the recruitment camp. We had those pretty fleshed out. Those were easy. Oh, yeah. It was just Cam. Those were pretty easy to set up and run, right? That, that was yeah. really easy. There were also some of my favorite parts. I really ended up loving uh, Alicia as a character, and every time you said Alicia, oh, I died a little bit more inside because now sometimes whenever I see that name Cam, my brain thinks Alicia and not Alicia. Oh, and I'm God. going to lose anyway. Off yeah. of that, right? There were a few deaths that we knew of beforehand, right? There were actually, I think, only two. And one of them was even, like, yeah. debated. So let's begin with Dan. Originally, Kathy was at some point meant to get sent to the kitchen crew, where she was going to have to investigate um, them. And at the end of the day, she was actually going to be forced to kill them. Like, herself. Like, she was going to be have to pull the trigger on them, almost. Because it was pretty much like, give us up, and then they can live, and then please save them. However, Dan was still going to sacrifice himself for his crew. In the end, we gave that to Ghosty, but we kind of changed the circumstances a little bit. Which I meant... really liked how we did it. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be one last final prison break, because that only bought some time with suspicion and whatnot. And all of the factors just equated to, we had to get out. Or at least Ghosty, then and that group and the prisoners they needed to get and go right but that would still cause a risk for us so that's why we had all that arguing however you know dan almost didn't die we nearly didn't give that to ghosty because we when we were rewriting we're like how much of this is going to change so we almost thought that well i guess dan gets to live because i guess we won't really have that connection with the kitchen crew anymore until we did until we most certainly did because it came to me naturally at some point it's like we really should bring that back because we should give ghosty to that because i was it's kind of a thing of, like, some people I had more, like, visions of for than others, kind of, like, how their path was going to go. I knew the beginning and the end, and I knew the basis of everyone's, like, areas, right? I'm in maintenance, and I'm dealing with, you know, Victor. Victor was such a struggle to write sometimes. Like, such a struggle oh on how God. to wait, deal with wait, the wait, interactions. Wait, wait, Swan, Swan, stop. Swan, stop for a second. Yeah? Thank you, Cat. <laughs> Thank you, Cat Gilbert! I saw Cat appear behind you! Wait, Cat! 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 Cat, are you joining Kat. us? Cat, you don't have to. I can't sit down. They won't let me in the chair. Let me sit. Let me sit. I don't see you. I don't see you. I don't see you. I don't see you. Cat, give her! Please! Wait, you can just do the slash sit. You can just do slash sit. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're no longer we're no longer in character, so like, you could actually be Cat. Indeed, Cat was like phenomenal. None of the backstaging could have been done without Cat because I cannot explain shit well enough. It's a, anyone will tell you. I'm trying to explain something. It's just it takes a year. Yeah, that's why I'm like I'm mm -hmm. down to explain anything. Cat down to explain mm -hmm. anything as well. But back to the deaths, right? So Dan did end up dying, and I think it really, really hurt because it was done in a different way. Originally, of course, you know. Because the thing is, he had to ask. He ended up being this vigilante or like this, uh, this, this martyr, right? Martyr. He was like, okay, look, I'm gonna go down, right? I'm gonna go down, and I, I need, I can't ask this of anyone else, and I hate even asking this of you, but I need you to help me go down. And so instead of like, you know, this moment where they have to come to the decision themselves, and kind of Dan maybe accepting it and being like, I know you have to do this, but like, don't take down the others. Like, leave it with just me, and then please, can you take take care of the prisoners, too? It's actually, like, 
he's asking Ghosty, I need you to do this, and I need you to help them get them all out. Like, please. Like, I'll buy the time. You need another day. This is the last day. I will buy us that time. All you have to do is help direct the trigger at me, but you don't have to pull it. And that, I feel, hurts so bad, because then Ghosty, like, he spared Ghosty the, the having to deliver the news, but I think that death I'm really glad it was brought back. Yeah. Um, the second death that was planned from the beginning was Fair. That Fair, was the very beginning. Fair was the one I knew instantly. I knew from my perspective that there's going to be a character that's like a father figure or like just some guy that genuinely cares about Swan for seemingly little reason other than like, you're similar to me and I don't want you to go down the same path. And I just, as a human being, I care about you because Swan hasn't experienced as much as that of that necessarily like there's basic human care right but this guy was literally just like you deserve it you deserve this care insistent and she's like oh okay buddy Marsha's dead ah! oh god yeah well technically aren't we all <laughs> I mean technically yeah we're all dead Cats are more <laughs> alive than we are actually oh my god but yeah. like um fair was my favorite character right and I was so worried because we had to make more cuts. We had to cut down some of the streams. There were originally going to be, I think, eight, as in eight from the time we got into the facility. Cam got uh, technically eight overall, I think. The rest of us got six. Yeah. Um, however, due to, like, time, we couldn't. So there was meant to be one stream where it was really fair and, and um, Primunio-centered for Cam and me, but we had to cut that down and shove it into other things. So we really only got one yeah. stream where we saw Saw Fair. And I was so worried, so that's when I came up with the book idea. I was a little inspired by the Etheria art, because I knew that there was a mysterious benefactor who communicated with the group through books. I was like, well, that helped set up the character before they met, so I figured I'll pull kind of a similar thing here. Fair communicates through books. Robo -dog and Robodog. That's... Yeah. I just, I love this Hold image. Is it, is it still terrifying Steve Dog for you? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Try it. What? The, uh, Robo Dog! Oh, Robo Dog! <laughs> Robodog! We love Fair yeah. is literally, he was my favorite character to write. Yeah. I'm not lying. He existed for technically such a short time as compared to some of the others, but he was my favorite. And I, the uh, reason why he's named Rookie, in case I never got to say, because I think it's good information, pretty much when Fair was like, you know, injured after the explosion and slowly starting to recover and stepping into his new position because he became the director of maintenance. Vivian made him Robodog, probably out of a lot of guilt and stuff for hiding up what Victor did, but still, she made him Robodog, and for a while, Fair didn't want Robodog. He'd gotten a few, you know, uh, cybernetic stun, and Vivian was trying to convince him to get a little bit more, and he's like, no, you know, machine and metal not meant to mix, or man and machine not meant to mix. And she's like, look, this will return some of your vision. You'll be able to see at least a little bit again. You'll be able to, like, like a guide dog, right? And, you know, eventually, though, Robodog, you know, would, like, hang around Fair, just, like, in Fair's, you know, little office or whatever. And yeah. eventually, over here. you know, Fair, in his despair, he was trying to, like, invent. He was trying to... He lives! To Oh, wait, he's still in the room, isn't he? He's still in the room. You know, Fair would be trying to invent, you know, he'd be stumbling his way around to the workbenches, all his tools clattering to the floor because his mobility is shit. He really has to get other people to do a lot of the, like, he can invent stuff, but he can't really build it. And eventually, you know, Robodog would help him. He'd go grab a wrench. He'd go do something. And so eventually he started being like, ah, I guess you're my rookie mechanic, aren't you? And that's how Robodog got called rookie. Yeah. Uh, Swan, whenever you're done talking, um, plot-wise, I will go into the build bit, because, yeah, mm -hmm. holy shit. Alright, I'll try to then hurry up then, because there's still... Anyway, back to the, back to the other deaths, so. though. Um. Oh, yeah. Was Tom planned from the beginning? I don't remember. I think Tom wasn't planned originally. Oh, yeah, no, Tom wasn't. Right, okay. So this what is before the... we introduced mm -hmm. Primunia. The greatest struggle about introducing Primunia. I knew it was coming up, right? You know, the streams are ticking down. His stream is coming up where we're having to introduce him. <laughs> I still don't know how I'm going to introduce him. You know? I'm just, I'm struggling, right? And then suddenly I look at Tom and I'm thinking, Cam's in this room. Cam needs to get noticed by Primunia. How do I... What if a position was suddenly vacant? Or vac vacant? They can't help. <laughs> you know what you mean. They know what I mean. What if that suddenly came to be? 
And also, you know, Primunia would be the sort to be displeased at all the problems he's hearing about, because he'd leave it all up to Tom to deal with, so he shouldn't be hearing anything. He doesn't want anything to do with it except the big things and to take credit. So, I thought, what if he walks in, just says, like, a little word, not really much, and then stabs him with his gauntlet claws. Those were my favorite things, by the way. I, Cam, like, oh gave me gosh. a base, like, inspiration design for Primunia, and I'm the one that drew it, and then Candy was the one that made the skin. Um, and then yeah, Rex was props. the one that gave him a voice and brought him to life. I, yeah, it was not We originally... did not tell him to say babes. He made it work, yeah, and I died. Like, if you sort of say with Primunio, it was not originally planned to have any rituals involved, like, any greater involved in mm -hmm. this. But then Rex just one day called, like, yo, you want Primunio? And we went, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing we... Of... Sorry. Uh, it's like, so we took it with stride because, um, sadly, uh, the original plan for Primunio never came to the light of day. Well, it, it, uh, it but... happened, but I don't think that content will ever see the light of day because he came, yeah. he's taken down his VODs for Mythos, which is really sad. It was really good. What yeah, so edited. because of that, it had been addressed in character that Primunio had been dealt with, but never really got to see it on camera, which is just And it was only by word of mouth, fine. so one could believe that perhaps he survived, which is actually, you know, what Primunio was on about. The reason why Primunio is here at this info hub was because Primunio nearly died to this vessel and then killed the vessel afterwards, but still, he nearly died. It was kind of considered a failure, so he was sentenced here for his redemption, also probably because of his personality. He's a little which, problematic. <laughs> which, with everything with... Sad. Which, the stuff with Primunio, we weren't originally going to have... Pri like, once we got Primunio, we did not originally plan on having a voice or anything. But then Rex was like, yo, yo, I'd be down to voice them if you want. And we went, fuck yeah. And, and we did Rex not... And probably regretted that decision a We just bit told later. him... Cock we only told him cocky motherfucker, and he just... He full sent it, he and I, I don't really remember loved it. The life of me, what line it was, but it originally started out as a joke because Rex said something like in a Premunio voice, and he was like, and we were all like, "Yo, would you be down to actually voice him?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure." I don't remember the line either. It's yeah, just either. Rex really brought to life the character, and it made me so happy. No, yeah. we knew Primunio was going to die too, so he technically counts on the list of people we knew were going to die. But that's kind of obvious. Yeah. He's a greater, and that was Cam's. You know, Cam was the one meant to really get this takedown. Get meant. To, this was Cam's kind of leadership arc. Kind Yee. of. Actually, what we really wanted to do in the beginning to develop that more was to actually have us be fighting a lot more in the beginning. Yeah, we were going to be yeah, we fighting Yeah, we meant to more. actually show that we had horrid fucking teamwork. Because this was a group <laughs> consisting of people that didn't work together often. Especially considering yeah. that Kathy and my character do not get along. Like, last time we met, you know, at odds, we're not, you know, on good terms. Yeah, because if you think about it, you got Blood Oath person with Library person with Kat, who's technically a peacekeeper, and <laughs> yep. then Ripper, who's a child. I'm not River. Ghost you who's a child. I got River on the brain. Blech. So but, it was yeah. just all these people that don't work together often. You know, some of them have bad blood. Some of them just haven't spoken, really. And all of them are, like, you know, trying to work together. And Cam's trying to corral this. And obviously, you know, Swan here isn't used to being given orders. She doesn't like it. You know, she's like, you know, I'm, I say shit and my opinion should be heard. Because most people in library listen to her. You know? So... You know, then having to suddenly de defer to Cam, especially, you know, Swan's here like, this isn't logical, you know, this isn't worth it. And Cam's like, no, we should. And Swan's like, mm-hmm. So we managed to yeah. show that a little bit with the whole argument that we ended up having, that we were arguing for quite a while. But, you know, and also at the end, Swan did defer to Cam and was like, Cam, what do we do for the finale? So that, yeah. I feel, was really good. Now, Vivian, on to her death. Oh, that was... Oh, that yeah, I, I had not planned until I was writing the scene. I was really struggling. I think my perspective actually was the one yeah, that I struggled with. We got a good view for with. chat. <laughs> there we go. Better. I think my perspective is the one I struggled with the most, as in writing. Which is funny, honestly. Yeah. You'd think i you know, have the most ideas for myself. And I had a lot yeah. of ideas, but the pieces weren't fitting together. I was struggling with my dynamic with Victor. Victor was actually meant to be executive director of maintenance from the start he wasn't meant to get yeah. the position it was actually meant to be someone else that had a petty shit 
you know, blew up the generator. But then it kind of felt like Victor doesn't feel like the rival I want right now. This is meant I want the themes of cyborg versus cyborg, who's the better one, and, you know, machine versus man and that kind of stuff, like losing yourself to the machine. I wanted all those themes, but it wasn't coming through until suddenly I realized, why is Victor my boss? He shouldn't be my boss. We should be competing for the same position, and then he should win, and then I should destroy him. And that was kind of, you know, the change that really helped a lot. But to do that, that meant I needed to switch him out with someone. Originally, Vivian was gonna kind of meant to be a second, kind of like Victor ended up being in the thing. So Vivian ended up being the executive director, and she was a character I hadn't put much mind to, to be honest, for personality. Other than Niall, Kate, and Easton, I almost hadn't thought too much, and Victor, of course. So she started developing into this kind of person, and then suddenly, through another stream, like, you don't know how much of this was coincidental, or shit, I decided on the spot. Oh my god. Vivian and yeah. Victor originally did not have a relation. They didn't know each other as, like, children. They just met in the info hub, originally. And then suddenly, as we're working through the roadmaps, and we get to this, this stream where it happened, I'm like, I feel like we should find something in this office. What if Vivian and Victor had a past? And so there was a photo that Ghosty found. And I was like, huh, and then that ended up being some passwords for some stuff. Um, and then later on, we develop it even more to have, like, Vic the re reason Victor really came after me was because of what I do to Vivian. Which, yeah, Vivian actually was doing all this stuff, and she really wasn't happy, but, like, almost in a way that helped Victor. With Vivian dying, it almost snapped him out of his, like, egotistical, I'm the best cyborg in the world, almost mindset. And Victor, I really wanted him to be competent. He had something to back up his words. Maybe not all the time. He did still make some stupid mistakes, but he did also make good calls. I just wasn't able to fully show that as much as I could have or wanted to. So Vivian's death, I think, really helped push my perspective along in switching Vivian and Victor really also. And the whole friend group, actually, of, you know, Victor, Vivian and fair knowing each other that was all also kind of at the moment because the first connection i made of course was vivian and victor but then later when i get to fair and we're writing almost the the stream before the finale i'm thinking you know we're developing more and more about this explosion because i know this explosion destroyed fair but what else happened you know like obviously these guys were around and then i suddenly you know i suddenly established that niall was also in the friend group <laughs> <laughs> and that Niall turned down the position, and that Vivian covered up for Victor, and that's where it really started. It just really solidified everything. This was an old group of friends that crumbled, and now we're dealing with their past, and you know, that's why I like the end cinematic so much, because Fair's coming to speak to this old friend, and both of them have destroyed each other in other ways, and that it ends in that fiery pit, because, oh no... <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I think I accidentally ended mm -hmm. up getting into a lightning duel with um, with Candy. So Let's talk about Cam's perspective now, just a little bit. <laughs> Amanda. Amanda was a crackhead Amanda. thing. Me and Kat were staying up late, right? We were working. We were yeah, playing stuff. I love stuff. how all the characters are written for my bit. I randomly say, what if Amanda was like Kirsten. 60? Or Kirsten. Fuck. What if Kirsten, yeah, Kirsten. Sorry, I'm talking about Kirsten. What if Kirsten was like 60? She's like 65 or something, right? Which works she's with this the hair old, color. grizzled. Yeah, yeah that, no, that's we, what we, started we the thought. Up. It's like, her hair, her hair is all silver. Mm -hmm. And just Swan just is like. It would be what if really her hair funny. It's just like graying. Mm hmm. Because to me, it's like, it, 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 there's this old, like, really hardened old woman character that's a blacksmith, so she's, like, also a badass, and she's the one teaching Cam how to do blacksmithing. Yeah. And so that started, and then we kind of have Amanda introduced, and she's kind of, like, almost this, like, not-grandkid that she kind of took under her wing. So now they have that dynamic, and I really love it, and then Cam's coming in, and she's almost like this older kind of person like this nephew maybe that's visiting or something and they just have this really good dynamic but lowell our boy our boy <laughs> lol the beloved i loved how lowell was written so lowell Super we uh, we did not expect to like lowell as much cam or not cam cat and i have adopted him he is our child <laughs> um, 
Uh, Lowell became this room. golden retriever boy. We already kind of like planned for him to be the sort where he was eventually he was gonna be one of the last Hold people on, to I'll betray. Be All right. Okay. He was gonna be one of the last people to betray. And that was and but he'd come back and redeem himself. He was actually meant to be redeemed. On Ghosty's end with what's her face? Um what was her Elise? name? Zilla? Zilla. Her name was Zilla. Zilla. Yeah, Zilla. Zilla was yeah. meant to betray her, but wasn't really meant to be redeemed. Because really, the reason for betrayal wasn't that deep. It was, I don't want to be made fun of like you, so I don't want to associate with you. She was very flaky and was not a good friend. Lowell, however, was just struggling with a lot of feelings of cowardice. Like, he really wanted to stand strong and stuff like that. He didn't want to do this to Cam, and he regretted it the instant it happened. He regretted yep. it so instantly. He was he so was sad. But... You know, he'd done it, and he was like, I've always done this. I've always run away, and, you know, at the point, you should just, I'm not a good person to be around. I'll do it to you again. And Cam's like, look, just tell me when you're scared. I can be brave enough for the both of us. And he's like, you'd really give me another chance? And she's like, yeah, just talk to me, man. And he's like, okay, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Was that everyone? Ah, it always happens. No! So that was Lowell. Um, Kirsten and Joshua were really we'll kind wait. of... They didn't have too much to them. They really still don't, to be Hello, honest. Hello! Welcome! Welcome to chat! <laughs> Sorry, I had someone pop in chat. You know, it's all good. Um, Kirsten and... Or not Kirsten. C Christian! I regret naming Chris Christian and Kirsten yeah. so similarly. Their names. It happened, so. I regret it. <laughs> anyway. Those two didn't really have too much to them, to be honest. They were kind of just, they were meant to be the antagonists. But when I was writing, I started being like, what if he just calls people brother and sister? Because I imagined him as this semi-charismatic guy. Because he has managed to talk his way through some stuff for a while. And I mean, yeah, in a way it can be a little creepy, but imagine you're some guy, right? You're like fresh 20s, right? You're kind of lost in life. You're looking for a purpose, somewhere to belong. And this guy comes up to you and calls you brother or calls you sister. And he's like, welcome, man. You know, we're like family here. I've got your back. You know, all you got to do is stand by me. And it's like, you know, that's kind of convincing in some aspects. And Joshua, I just kind of imagine, has almost always been by his side for whatever reason or the other. And jo Kurt Christian does the talking for Joshua because Joshua doesn't like to. That's why Joshua was so silent oh, in the beginning. Okay, uh, Katie's so working on getting the server back up right now, so mm -hmm. just uh, give Katie a bit. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that's pretty much the characters, I think, in um, that area. The thing with Tom and Kirsten, though, that I really like to think is I often, like, I know we didn't really show them with much of a di dynamic. I don't even think they really had the chance to talk once, right? But they were both older guys. You know, Tom had a family. He had, you know, twins, I think. Or something. He did, yeah. Yeah, it started getting a little confusing after the fifth yeah. photo that we added into the order. <laughs> um, uh. But, you know, Tom, he, he, while he's not as old as Kirsten, he is, like... He's at least, like, 30-something, right? So he's, like, that guy, that, he's old enough to have been my son. And he's gone. And I like to think that, you know, she often got to talk with him in a way, and he respected her strongly, and it's just gone. So I, I, the memorial bit that they held, I feel, really just hit. Yeah, that's, which, that was, like, a last-minute thing to add in that memorial. Mm -hmm, that really was last-minute. It's, like, I feel like we should have one. And I think we hadn't fully got it set up. It so wasn't. Like, yeah, no, I towards had, the end oh. of the stream, we had that fade or whatever, or I think a small cinematic or something. And so it's like, all right, guys, let's hurry. Time to set it up. <laughs> it was more like I was making sure I could stall the entire time. Mm -hmm. Just so many things with this. Oh, my God. Like, when the server gets back up, I really do want to get into the building because yeah, that of, way like, you can head on over oh, as well. Oh, it's up. So we'll take a break from talking about lore so that Cam can go over building stuff and its challenges because Cam was phenomenal with the build. It's not just Meanwhile, me. There were a lot of other people that helped. Actually, I'm going to hop over to the Peacekeeper chat because I'm in way too many perspectives. <laughs> you have fun, Chad. See ya. Okay. Now that we're back on the motherfucking server, let's go into detail a about this area, which oh my god, this it wasn't fully built when we started. We yeah, tried our best wear to get everything. Built. Sylvain skin for this. 
Because I adore it. You know what? It. Fuck it, yeah. Let let's me get, get my edict, edict one on as well. Edict time. Yep. Edict time. Edict time. Okay. Let's go ahead and start from the uh, the very bottom. Actually, the very, very bottom, if we're going to go accurate-wise. Basically, I'm getting this all the way down into the fence. Because, <sighs> uh, yeah. Which, the defense, I had some issues with, but it works out. Oh, thank you, thank you. Anyways, um, basically, I was the one that uh, was under control of all the building for this arc. But I also got some help from Justin, which, bless his heart, he's the one that helped a lot. Like, the entire recruitment island, that was all him. And Justin he helped so figure out- Justin is so good with these yeah. types of pallets. Like, you need something yeah. mechanical seemingly built, like a rusty, you know, rusty yeah. bucket? Get him. Yeah, pipe pour and all that. But yeah, this, um, but yeah, we kind of were designing it, and we came up with, like, this- but actually became a battery design, and then it just grew from that. It we did just have added to grow, but we in our heads really called it the battery because if you yeah. if you think about it, it's multiple floors in this cylindrical shape stacked on top of each other. We did have to add some extensions yeah. to some things because it just wasn't yeah, good enough. Like, but overall, example, I still call it the battery. Like for example, when you walk down here to go to the fence, uh, there wasn't originally a staircase to go down into these random paths of hallways. That was added in maybe like two days before the actual stream that um, go see we need to navigate. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Uh, then we worked on these little individual rooms. They're pretty much um, cookie cutters of my room. I just pop copied and pasted, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is like where we would be if you were a, um, I think what you mean swan? Oh, there we go. You're good. But we yeah, did um, label, actually. Um, yeah, you know, we did it, label. So there are labelings for, like, oh, you know, Eden is an armory, so she has this ingot above her, which is, you know, armory. You know, so Lowell yep. over there is also armory. We have Finian, who is actually um, information and uh, elimination. So the dagger over there is for elimination, and the feather or the quill or whatever is for um, info. So, you know, you yep. can tell who's dual. And you can also tell that most of these people are armory, and that's how it is for uh, squad leaders. Most of them are assigned armory. So yep. anyone that's not armory was probably someone on a squad that wasn't squad leader first, but later got promoted in their squad to squad leader. But yeah, now we're into the um, main area down here. Now this, we had to kind of figure it out in between because um, Swan had the idea of, they're down here for so long, they haven't seen the sun. Let's give them a little bit of grass. And then I'm like... Yeah, I'll take that grass and I will raise you the edict version. A.K. Mm -hmm. I thought, let's throw in some liquid death for the water instead. And I doubt they would have like proper trees down here, so I thought like tainted trees would be nice. Which this style of tainted tree, um, I originally started to figure out, but I was helping Arky with um, a little build in Vitrum, like just a quick little build thing. I came up with this and then I evolved it, and this is the design I came up with for um, tank trees, or flux trees, depending on how you feel. But um, we decided that everyone have just a bunk out in the middle of open, just so that they didn't have any privacy at all. Because, like, it makes it harder to hide shit, so just keep them out in the open. Mm -hmm. So It was also just yeah. meant to be for the uncomfortable factor of, hey, you guys, you yeah. grunt people, you regular crew, you do not get... The luxury, the luxury of having four snug walls to hide out the world. Now, you get four walls, but no, everyone can see you sleep. Now, fun fact, this um, infirmary, I did not build it. This is something that Justin built. And he got, like, inspiration from, like, FIFA camps and all that. So, uh, that's what he did. Kind of mm -hmm. got that in here. I had some fans as well that are kind of, like, broken. Some were working. Um, any events that were added were added after the build, so if there were fades to blacks, that was because it did logistically make sense how to build mm -hmm. vent fully. You know, so we utilized point, fade to blacks We lot. built vents for the first stream with vents, and we connected them all, and then we realized this is too much. It was probably necessary for that first stream, but every time after, every time we've had to have vents or where we go somewhere that we don't have a hallway connected to, we just connect it via, like, we fade. We, we utilized fades yeah. a lot because we had to add on builds. Anyways, uh, back to it. Uh, this is Adil's office, and that's actually where I came up with this design for the um, little plaques that you see everywhere. I'm the one that came up with it. It's like, I'm looking at this banner that we're usually associated with Edict, right? And I thought it would be cool if I could make, like, a plaque out of it. So I took some time, and I did. It, it just turned out amazing. Everyone started using a similar style for making plaques, and I feel honored 
because of that because it looks really nice and i really do like how dell's office turned out it's nice and quaint hey ovac welcome to the talk about infiltration how are you hi i'm good swan i want to steal you at some point all right uh um, yeah you have you've got a free moment well after this yeah. i do have to go talk about library it's all good just give me a let me know when you're free and i uh we'll do talk about that like fucking how long is this document nine page document with like essays worth of comments on it i want to talk about that scrap doc with you oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> okay anyways um we'll get back to this okay uh now this is a cafeteria now i actually have a speed build recorded of it i need to figure out how to do it but it's evolved since i started it um like i even chiseled like little um little, little uh, lunch trays, trays dinner, but dinner but originally originally this back area wasn't built i think mm -hmm. was it cat that built this uh it might have been it might have i think, have, I think ghosty cat. actually oh maybe yeah i think ghosty but, uh, helped at the very least because yeah. i remember her working on it but yeah uh basically yeah that's the general gist of the first floor mm -hmm. uh, th this is what we actually count as the first floor because this is the floor that well, no, when this you is the fifth floor but technically, this is the first floor you see when you enter the hub, when you go down the elevator. That now, on to the next floor. Protocols have it, you know, anyone gets on the elevator, you're going down straight to the fifth, just in case you yeah. aren't registered, because then, you know, how you get now, there's a floor full of people that will deck you. We'll go with Armory first, since I know that area better. Mm -hmm. So, with Armory, uh, yes, all the nether portals are hooked up. Oh, I'm also proud of this command. idea. So, pretty much, you know, I me- I was Okay, okay, you can have the floor. You can have it. You can have it. Yeah! Yes, I get the talk now. I got the talking mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, so when we were doing the design, we just, one day, we just were trying to figure out how the fuck we were going to do something for Armory and all that. And then we thought of the nether highways and the nether. But then we're like, how are they going to have all the nether highways work? And then the crackhead idea came into our head, and we called it Monsters Inc. Nether Portals. And literally, in the actual uh, document that for the drawing, it literally, this is labeled Monsters, Inc. Nether Portals. Because so we had the idea that they were cycling through, and mm -hmm. each um, portal was synced to a different nether highway. Now, for the sake of simplicity, and I don't want to build, like, five million nether highways, we decided to settle on, like, four. And I literally planned out outlines. And gave it to Justin, who did the palette and everything for the Nether Highways, bless his soul. And then um, us, the rest of us came in and we actually decorated the Nether Highways mm -hmm. afterwards. He did really amazing on that palette. I really appreciate him for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think we can hold off on going to the Nether Highways, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, as you can see, like, we got a little inventory area where there's a lot of weapons, which we made a nod that eventually Ghost was going to get a hammer by throwing in... Well, the hammer that she would get, um, the base thing. So, um, yeah, we thought that this would be a great arc bit for uh, Ghosty to get her hammer because she always wanted to get one, and we wanted to be that gateway. So, just like a nice little general area for um, armory stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't spend um, much time in here, but Lowell most certainly did. Yeah. Now into electrical, which into the maintenance area, which. Justin handled all this build, and mm. all we told him was electrical from Among Us would be so cool. And he literally recreated electrical from Among Us. Like, if you look at this, this is like the light panel that you have in electrical in Among Us uh, for handling that task. All these tasks back there. We originally had a sign over here saying, um, don't vent, it's weird, or something like that. Like, then for the Justin last time, stop venting, but then we actually were going to utilize vents, so we took that down. Yeah, and then um, we started... Uh, Justin added computers in there, and then we came up with the Thumbbook Pro. Like, the our head cannon was, after that, we were joking about um, Edict being Apple users. <laughs> um, um, due to, uh, we had a, the generator was a kind I of last-minute add-on. Yeah, I still it, don't know who left the single torch in here. We needed I it, still don't. So, but, like, I wanted a proper hallway because originally it was a vent that was connecting it, which I thought was a little odd, you know, but Justin then went and connected it. But due to, like, everything already being built and planned out and everything being very well laid out, it wasn't really room, so we hid it, and, you know, that was fine. Yeah, that's why the vents became a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, when in doubt, if you can't come somewhere, vents. Yeah, but for the generator room, it really didn't make sense for it to be connected via a vent. 
So this is the technical main room that everyone gathered in every morning because I just ended up using it as the main room. Yeah. Um, I'll be on the next floor whenever you're ready. Yep. I'm here. Okay. Now this one, this was like one of the first rooms I actually made. Which I... I wish we could have been in here more because it has mm. so many details it's I never got to show. It's such a good floor and Kathy yeah. was really going to explore like a lot of it. And when Which... Kathy was a part of it, she was even going to have a lot of like Kathy Medea like interactions where, you know, she snuck in here. But that kind of had to get Which... handed over to me. Which props um, to Lily because Lily came in and made these chandeliers without me knowing. I uh, bless her soul. But yeah, there's like these little details that I can now show better. Like, of course, we added the archives room last minute because I forgot to originally build one. So um, you have that nice little archives room. But if you noticed in the build, if you saw these, this is actually little tubes that you could actually throw papers down. I made it so that in theory, if thrown correctly, you could throw the paper down. And I'm like, this is going to be so cool to show off, but never got to. But yeah, see, you could throw it in the hole. Mm. I tried and then it to at down some point, here. but it wouldn't work for me. Yeah, I, this is the first time I got into work in a while, but yeah, that was the same process. Like, that way they could throw stuff down, throw stuff up and all that. It was mm -hmm. just a neat idea. Um, but yeah, it's just generally this is where the decoding and all that stuff would happen. I we were thinking about, like, making little decoding situations for uh, Cappy at the time when we were going to do that, but because um, of reasons, uh, we had to. Yeah, early, early on, before Cappy had left, we were like, this isn't going to work. So that's why we scrapped... You know, showing, like, having an actual perspective and in information. That's why we kind of slotted that to Medea. Um, that's why we kind of handed Kathy actually elimination. Because that's a, f that perspective I could work with and could make interesting on the daily. And that also worked for, um, those of you that know what Medea's done. Um, it really worked for, uh, her, like, controlling yeah. then the flow of information we really got. And now for the floor that was not finished building. This was finished. I finished building this like maybe a stream or two before we actually had to come onto mm -hmm. this floor. And there are still empty offices because we would chip away at it. We like did a yeah. rooms as necessary by this point. Yeah. So like we had like a little waiting area built in here, um, which Kat helped with us too as well. Thank you, Kat. Uh, little offices to work with. Um, this never got shown, but I had actually built like a little armory area up here for. Let's say um, something happened, you know, it, this would be a way to protect the executives and the other directors up here. They had like a little army at their disposal if something ever happened. This mini room over here, this was, um, I'd say built maybe like a couple of days before the actual, um, the actual situation that we needed it for. So uh, yeah, which I really liked how it was. Sucks I had to make it even, but work with what we have here in Mythos. Um, but yeah, I took some of this basic design and that this was originally, um, I took a little design from where the conference room ended up being because that was where I had put a meeting room. I changed it to a conference room last minute just because it would make more logistical sense. Let me see if I get the right hallway. I get to get the right hallway. So for example, um, not all these rooms are done. Uh, like some of them are cookie cutter, like, uh, Kaylee Childs, um, was just a copy and pasted, um, room that i have oh god i don't even know um but yeah so vivian didn't have that much detail this is pretty much copy and pasted but we did add a little panel in here as Fuck. a little schematic why can't i creative um i think the go. server lag yeah. yeah so of course we had like this little i had a little room in the back where from where i was like working on um yeah this was this was a scam this wasn't actually redstone to yeah. just you know make like it this one I had to kind of like wiggle in last minute because this was not originally planned as it, we said we didn't have a plan fully for Vivian. So that's what happened. Uh, Kayla Childs is like pretty much a thing. This was just a vacant office because we didn't have another person there. So we labeled it vacant. Mm -hmm. And this is what used to be uh, Tom's office, mm -hmm. which um, I decided at that time, this is where I came up with this design variant of the um, logo. And I thought that he would be buried in paperwork. It seemed like a character trait of him. Mm -hmm. And it was the idea of giving him twins, like, during the uh, one stream. Almost to humanize him a little more, to just make people, like, Cam and everyone aware that he make had a family. Make you cry. 
so that when he died, it's like now his family doesn't have a father. Also, can we just admire the like uh, the shortenings? The what are these called? You know, like EOA and EOI and those things. You mean the the title Acronyms. abbreviations? Yeah, yeah the abbreviation. title abbreviations. Can we just admire them because Primunios is like um, director of armory or DOA, which, which means is also dead on another... arrival, and yeah. he was going to die. He was free to. Gonna... We're not going to question my fares as Dom. We're not going to... Totally accurate. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I have... Let me see if I can That's find... That's why I find oh. them funny. There's just a lot of good ones. Wait, I think if I'm right, I have the scam for this conference room. Give me one second. <laughs> Teleport. That way I'm there. I need to find... Oh, yeah. Um, slash scam load. Um, conference find... That way we can actually view it. There we go. Cool. I had made this one just in case. Mm -hmm. This was originally going to be a meeting room, but uh, due to how we decided to change the ending, we decided, you know what? Fuck it. It'd be cool if this was a conference room. This is where, um, at the time, Premunia would contact Ignis and be like, mm -hmm. yo, I just got a vessel. Um, I would love a nice, juicy promotion. I know there's Supreme slots available. Like, yeah, that's who like Premunia was talking shit. to when Cam kind of burst into the room. He ended a call with Ignis. Yeah, which we personally would not write for Ignis because we don't know Ignis as a character and we yeah. don't Any, Anything we have to get run by, like, either Rex or Candy, depending on the, like, whoever's character it is, we run it by them and we did not have time to do that. So we were kind of just yeah. like, yeah, let's, let's just, you know, see, we'll imply it. We never saw Stell's office, but this is why. It's because mm -hmm. we didn't have to come in here, so I never built it. <laughs> Indeed. Same with this office the only ones ever built was Moody. gonna get more use when kathy was information but yeah. again with that change she wasn't used as much she surprisingly found some use taking over maintenance for a Thank short you. period but yeah but yeah so when it came to building um Primunio's office i just thought you know what what would make him seem more like a monster and I, that because like we had the idea of he was like hunter trophies mm -hmm. and all that i'm like we don't really have that many trophies, like hunting trophies to work with. And I'm like, wait, I came up with this when I was building it. I'm like, he could have taken a part of the Twilight game and mm -hmm. did that. So I thought, you know what? Make the chat even cry more. Uh, yeah. So that's why those are there. Then there was the nod. raised platform because Premunio, of course, knew you just entered. Premunio is going to look down on you. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much we made him fucking cocky and i love it mm -hmm. and rex did an amazing job like ep like after playing him for the first time like bouncing off of each other like i had a fade of black and me and rex were just like talking and we were like he was just having fun playing oh, premunio and there's premunio and kirsten's backstory like their relation that oh, actually yeah. was something we decided a little bit more last minute because we thought it would be uh, some it. nice connector themes to have like you know, Cam is uh, Kirsten's current pupil. Primunia was a failed, you know, other pupil of Kirsten's, and now they're fighting, and it's kind of like your soul weapon versus mine, except mine actually has my soul in it. <laughs> yeah. Type deal. Uh, but yeah, uh, another thing too was the reason why um, I went by the name Locke, because I'm the one that named Primunio. Um, mm -hmm. His name was Locke. I was like looking for names that meant fortitude and all that, because basically Primunio is armor, fortitude, strong, and all that. So I was like looking and I found the name Locke and I really loved the ring of it. Especially with how this arc is, I thought it was the most fitting name for the guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy we did it. But yeah, this entire first floor was done by Justin. He also designed the elevators. Like, if it weren't for him, I don't know if like this would be at a good starting point. So thank you again, Justin, for all the help. Thanks to everyone that helped out. Because I know like Arky Flame and a few other people helped with this as well. Um, also, thanks to, like, um, Candy and Rex also for helping out with this last minute. And can I just say, also, the cinematic for this, we never will write a cinematic last minute ever again, because I was in no, agony. never again. I was in agony Let trying to get that all recorded. never do deadline hell again. Like, I literally finished the cinematic not even an hour before that stream. <laughs> I was that down to the wire trying to get it done. It was, it was a mess. But, yeah. I really loved how this arc came out, and even though we had to rewrite so many times, we worked with the rewrites. It was so mm -hmm. worth it. The but, rewrites uh, were almost yeah. like a chance to just re-examine things, and we made it better for it, I think. Yeah. 
Oh, I think that's all I really wanted to touch on infiltration. Mm-hmm. And I think that so. probably should be where almost I end some of my touches on infiltration yeah, as well. Yeah, we've been talking. Because I also have other arcs to get to, and yeah. for me, I, I do plan to well. one day do a video where I talk about how I would yeah. like, rewrite some stuff, so there, no. this is not the last time I'll be talking about this stuff. So, Swan, you could go mm-hmm. now. You go, go, talk to your people. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, get the Q&A. Fuck, what room? I take this one. I should might as well hop here. Hello, are you alive? Yeah. Greetings. Hello. I'm gonna send a message to let any other library people know. Is it time to talk about library stuff? Yep. I might try to speed run a little, because there's a good amount, and I've talked about infiltration for god knows how long. But why don't, uh, we could- did you get a chance to talk about, like, Vizia Valley and all that? Uh, no, because the other two people who I talked to about are in the middle of protectors, so... Ah, I see. Well, we can start with library, then. Mm Mm-hmm. So, library, um... The first real stuff that I really myself started doing for library, which is where we'll start, was the Undanians. And when they started, you know, the whole Popero stuff where they were kind of like the sea siege, as I think I was calling it. Now, the sea siege was a little interesting... Uh, I would go show y'all Polpero, but there was actually meant to be a little mini Polpero arc that never got done. Um, pretty sure you were supposed to be on it, Mario. Yeah. Well, I was. That was one of my first library streams. Was defending library as a mm-hmm. newbie against the the water people. Yeah, but the, the actual Polpero arc that didn't get to happen. You were originally going to be a part of that until yep. we kind of canceled it. Uh, so I yeah. ended up, because of that, I ended up going to rebuild Polpero because I hated it. And so I was like, you know, let's rebuild this, you know, make it actually better. And I'll use, like, say, the veil or something to, like, excuse its rebuilding. Um, so if we actually fly over to Polpero right now, um, we aren't going to find much but actually a gap in the fucking sea. <laughs> if I can find it, that is. Uh, do do do. Yeah, no, see, actually, we can just look at it on the minimap. Because what we were going to do is, I wanted a really big ship. I wanted it to be a, sh- like, fleet of sunken ships. That's what I wanted. Um, and so, you know, we cleared out the ocean to begin the building, and we never finished it. So that's just a gaping hole in the fucking ocean. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had plenty of plans to try to perhaps use the story in some other way, but we never got around to doing mm-hmm. so. So Especially anyway, since that was supposed to be my first big arc, if I recall. That, I think that was maybe other than Lux, but Lux was a disaster in other ways. So probably yeah, one of your first big ones. Um, but we'll get to the Lux and Cognitio arc because it was really a shared arc. So just briefly brushing over the fish people. That's kind of how we got Adriatic in our town because what I was trying to do was play almost a little bit of catch up with Vanguard and them because I hadn't really been establishing a lot of NPCs or characters around myself, and I wanted to try to do that, so I was trying to quickly fill my town a little bit, which is why almost some people came out of nowhere. However, Medea, from the very moment I introduced her, she was going to do what she was going to do. And if you're unaware of what that is, um, well, this is spoiler zone, so you're hearing it. I've given you enough warning verbally to click away. Medea betrays, and she's actually the greater ritualist of Cognitio. So from that very moment, she set herself up to be viewed positively in my eyes by taking a hit for Danny. She knew exactly who Danny was. She knew exactly who I was. She was taking that hit so that I would be like, oh my god, you, you worked to save, you know, my child, you know, like, even you just didn't know we were vessels, so that's how Medea snuck her clever little claws in. As for Landon, um, I kind of had this idea about Landon in the back of my head, but I hadn't fully gotten it approved for a while. Landon was meant to have some different reveals. It just kind of was a, the one we got was I wanted it to at least happen. It, I wish I could give it the more time than what it got. So moving on then to Lux. Let me go see if I have the fucking teleport point for Lux. I probably don't. Lux were supposed to have big character girls together. Or I was where we were gonna start to learn to trust each other mm-hmm. through. Uh, Mario was through meant to inter- interrogate Lux a lot more, but those interrogations were meant to become more like talks, and through those talks, Mario would kind of almost befriend Lux a little more. 
for the last Cognitio stream where Medea revealed herself to me, it was meant to be a lot different and was meant to have a lot more library involved, but there simply wasn't time. Mario was meant to, like, what was meant to happen is we were meant to discover that Medea was Cognitio ourselves, and we were meant to kind of try to outsmart her. We were like, Medea is flighty. If she catches wind of us, she'll run. Medea was actually a lot different. She was meant to be slightly off her rocker, and instead I decided it would hit far harder if she was completely sane in all of her actions. So, but she was essentially going to fully at the first sight that, oh, the gig's up, because she can always take on another disguise, try again some other way. She can always reevaluate her plan. She can't do that if she's dead or caught, which is what makes her almost so effective. She's good at knowing when to stop. So what we couldn't do is let her catch on that we knew. So we had to act fast, and we had to let her think that her plan was going correctly. So she was meant to kidnap me still. We were going to, like, set it up so that she would kidnap me, except Mario and the rest of them would follow secretly. And they would then be working to try to, like, break in and get after me while I'm fighting for my life on the inside, holding Medea off and pretty much trying to keep her there. And That's Mario, awesome. behind my back, was meant to actually bring Lux to the scene, which would be vital in saving me. What actually happened is Lux broke free himself and came to find his mother, ended up finding, you know, that whole scene accidentally, ended up saving me. So it's it's a little unfortunate we didn't get what we got. Yeah, and it was also, during that arc, was supposed to also show me in the actual leadership position as second mm -hmm. in command. Exactly, it really was. It was meant to emphasize on that. Um, I don't have that many of the light mirages still saved. There are almost several. Um, Fun fact as well for those, since most it won't happen anymore. During the arc of, uh, during the arc of, uh, during one of the planned arcs, if we had time to have done it or been able to, because a lot of the arcs, a lot of them were delayed, which caused other things to be delayed and or be canceled, sadly. Me and Swan were supposed to be having some kind of falling out as friends and co-workers. Mm -hmm. And because of the whole Thumbcraft thing. Where I was going to be saying where Thumbcraft can be beneficial and helpful to people. While Swan was going to be arguing against it, saying, look what Thumbcraft has been doing to this world. It has been nothing but a tool for a weapon and destruction. And all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Which was originally going to be calling this thing a falling out, but we never really got to it because of time constraints. Yeah, it really was. And Lux was one of the most rewritten arcs. And there was a lot of reason for that because most there was people that would leave, people that wouldn't show up in time for streams. And this is an arc that was really important for me as like a content creator to learn that I can't have it all. You know, I, I couldn't. So pretty much I got more efficient at writing in some ways. Um... I pretty much said, if you're not me or someone that I really, really trust to show up, you're not getting a vital role, as in, you must absolutely show up or the stream won't work. Because when I kept doing that, people would leave or something else would happen. And, you know, I don't really, you know, any, I'm not, you know, saying, oh, yeah, you know, those people, whatever, you know, you know, it's fine. They had to leave for valid reasons. It's just the suddenness of when they kept doing it is what continued to screw me over. So that was a whole learning process for me. There was meant to be a lot different for Lux. This is around the time when ZK actually left the server. Um, and funny enough, if we had gotten this one last stream done, right, this one stream done, which was the stream where we confronted Lux in his little cave and we fought him and went through these, a few of us went through these light mirages while, you know, this was also meant to, you know, give Mario some leadership because Mario and whoever else that didn't have enough time in Mythos would have gotten their chance to kind of interact. I was actually, the Lux arc was meant to be a teamwork exercise. It didn't end up being that much of that. I, it was meant to have mm -hmm. so many traps and light puzzles and so much cool stuff. Lux was meant to be able to have clones, like for one for each color of the rainbow. Like it was gonna be so cool, I was so ready. And then people kept leaving library or just being inactive. And it was like, what, why? <laughs> won't name names on who it was but yeah, we will we're say not gonna name it, names but. it was frustrating to all parties involved especially since um during that time it was very busy for me i had multiple projects including origins at the time so i kept pushing things aside or making time for it and then and then i kept showing up and then nothing mm -hmm. i was we ended up sitting there for like an hour hoping for one or two people to show up or to tell us whether or not they were going to be coming or not and it was just so infuriating on all of our ends, almost. But we, I think in the end, almost the arc was a little bit better for it in some circumstances, in some ways. In other ways, not so much. 
it, the fact that it took so long, it was not meant to take two months. That was due to having to rewrite and fight everything to get the arc to happen. That was the most struggle time of my life other than infiltration. But infiltration was a different type of struggle. That was a time crunch struggle. This one was, my god, can we please stream? So Lux, you know, he he's a... Uh, he shows up, he kidnaps his kid because he wants justice. He wants us vessels to come out to this place so he can test us to see whether or not, you know, we're evil bad guys. Because pretty much he's grown up his entire life being told by his mother that, you know, vessels are, like, bad and that the edict is good. That the edicts are the good guys and we're saving this world from the light. And, you know, which to Lux is a little funny because he uses light. <laughs> um, but he had an interesting childhood. But his mother, Medea, did genuinely love him. That is something I will reveal. Uh, she did genuinely care for him, and Medea herself has had not had the nicest past, hence why she kind of ended up falling back into some patterns of, different patterns almost, of manipulation, but she did genuinely love her son and hopes that with him the cycle ends of, like, the trauma. Mm -hmm. But for Light Mirages, there was, you know, there were three people that went through Light Mirages. There was Danny, who I don't think ever had time to record his, because... You know, it would be difficult for all of us to run three different light mirages while, you know, the main fight against Lux was going on. That's a lot of backstage. You know, that's a lot. So, the goal was that Danny would, this would be one of Danny's last recorded Mythos streams, and he'd later go through and record his light mirage. Except, due to, like, time and effort, I wasn't able to finish writing it. So, at some point, I handed it over to Danny, and it was half written. It was half written, let me tell you um as in dialogue and i just it never got done so i ended up reusing that build for something else actually it was in the medea fight those places i went through with vanguard and all of them you know those little mini builds that was actually originally danny's light mirage um and then there was actually zk's light mirage i mean all of these mirages were actually based or meant to be based off of edgar Allan poe um but due to people leaving and other stuff it just did not work out ZK had to leave for, you know, very valid reasons, but it really screwed over a lot of things in the method of, like, he was in my light mirage as my main, you know, person I talked to, and now I couldn't do it. Pretty much, mine was based off of the poem The Black Cat, and we're gonna, you know, don't read that, that, that one. That one's, that, that one's actually kind of gruesome. Um, pretty much, there's this cat, and there's this owner. This owner, at times, gets a little drunk and, you know, just was in a bad place in his life and harms some of his other animals, but he manages to never harm the cat because he loves the cat. And the cat's, like, his best bud, would always follow around, you know, do all this stuff. They were best buds. Until one day, the dude really hurts the cat. I think maybe takes an eye or something. Whatever, you know, the case really hurts the cat. So the cat's, like, you know, scared of him now. And he's like, oh my god, I'm such a horrid person. I'm so, I'm disgusting. I'm the worst person on earth. And he, um, for a while he understands the cat's fear, but eventually... He gets really drunk again, and he's like, why? You know, it's been enough time. I feed you. I love you. You know, why Why won't you hurt me? And in the end, the black cat is killed. Now, obviously, for my light mirage, which was to follow a similar path, I was not going to do that. That's gruesome. Rather, instead, it was meant to be I was to take the role of the black cat. I actually had a skin that never got used. Um, I would fish it up, but I don't have it right now. Where Swan, you know, got to actually look like an ammon for once. She had some cat ears and a tail. She was the black cat. And there would be ZK, and almost Swan would be a little gaslit into thinking that none of what had been happening had happened. ZK had never left, you know, all this other stuff. But as time went on in this little mansion, um, Swan would keep making mistakes because, you know, that's the thing about Swan. She seemingly made all these mistakes, and, you know, they, people wouldn't let her forget. But at, at first, ZK would be like, oh, it's okay, you know, don't worry, don't worry about it. Um... But eventually, he'd start getting more aggressive about it. He'd start getting angry, like, why can't you do anything right? And Swan would start to question, like, is this real? Is this right? This doesn't seem, you know, whatever. So she's pretty much fighting to let go of a lot of the past, which, since this didn't happen this way, Swan didn't really let go of the past fully until after Medea. Hello, father, I'm streaming. Huh? Oh, groceries? I can try. Oh, there are groceries, but we only have so much time to talk. I'll try to finish Light Mirage stuff, and then, Mario, you can talk about anything else you want to with, like, Lux and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just trying to really quickly finish up my Light Mirage. Uh, I was, there was a cat companion that was meant to be with me, just because I did not trust myself to be able to find all of these keys and stuff like that. 
Um, because I was meant to find like five keys to get out of this place. And this was a big little mansion. Um, I might be able to find it to show it to y'all once I'm back. But eventually I would. And depending on the improv actually would change a little bit of the ending of this mirage. Either I would actually open the door or I would be so overwhelmed by what ZK says because as I'm going for the door from the top banister, he's like, where are you going? And it's kind of a situation where like, you know, he talks down to me and either I stand up for myself in that moment depending on the improv or I just give up. That kind of would depend on the improv. Um, but that didn't end up happening. As for Danny's, we can just let that one lie. Mario, I will let you take the stage while I hurriedly go uh, groceries. All right, so basically, a lot of stuff did not get to happen, and one of the big things that did not happen was actually, honestly, as much as I hate to say it, we were actually planning a bit of a civil war within the library. It was a civil war that was actually going to be happening between my side that led the side that basically was who f who felt Thomcraft was more than just a destructive tool. It was going to basically be Vizia Valley versus Library, and it would have been sort of a where I would have been creating, like, the library nights or the nights at a library or something like that. And it was going to be from there that me and Swan were going to be very much butting heads. It was going to be, like, a subdivision sort of way. But me and Swan would have been butting heads hard. And eventually it would have culminated into one of us having to give up our and understanding or us coming together in a mutual understanding. It was... It, it 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 was a lot, but it would have been an an ama like it would have been one of those things that would have would have been one of the amazing like ends to the uh, to a series or to a server and all that to and all that. But unfortunately, it was something that would that we never really got to do. That was that was part of the whole fight that me and Swan were at, about to have, but were not able to actively get to in the end, sadly enough. So, in the end, we couldn't really get to it. Another thing that, uh, that we wanted to do but couldn't really do was... I was actually supposed to be teaching classes at the, at the castle, actually. I was actually supposed to be teaching, like, classes for Thomcraft. And, <laughs> funny enough... Swan never actually got into the mod themselves, so that would have been also a way for Swan to actually learn how to do the mod itself as well. So when, uh, so when we actually got to the, uh, so when we actually got to start building the classrooms, we actually did not have the time to build everything we wanted to, or put everything we wanted to as well. So, by the end of it, we just had to scrap so much because of time constraints. Uh, let's see. The Four Horsemen. That's something I actually do not know about, actually. Because I was not there at the very beginning of Library, and I've been told not that much now that I'm thinking about it about Library. So, it's something that I don't know too much off the top of my head. Let's see. I'm talking about... I'm talking about how I remember Maring being asked to G. Yeah, I remember. Because it was at that point when Swan asked me to teach that Swan was kind of understanding that Thomcraft is a part of everyday life. You can't really fight or get rid of it. Fighting it would just cause more issues than actually, than actually accepting that it's actually a thing. So it was during that that we had... That we had the agreement and Swan kind of agreed to let let the characters learn ma magic at that place. You're you're curious on how I got all the swords from uh in my house? <laughs> that one was from Explorations. So one thing about library that we held to the core was exploration. Learning and and what and that was from uh, my explorations from the twilight to the aether 
to general mythos exploring. Every sword is kind of like a memento or a prize, a trophy that that my character had gained from from his travels. Because at the core, library was there to gather knowledge, to learn, to teach, that kind of stuff. Do you upload VODs for Mythos? Yes, actually, I'm about to, I'm actually going to be starting to upload what I have been able to salvage from past recordings onto the Mythos, onto my main channel, Mario Mania. So if, so some VODs that have not been released yet, or some streams and all that, that you may not have seen, may be on there soon. Um, but, let's see. Do you, yeah. But after that, um, it was after all that that we were eventually planning on having, well, the reunification between the two factions that would have been together. One would have been more of the, uh, more of an offensive group, while the other one, which would have been still been the main head group with, led by Swan, would have been the one that was, uh, that was, uh, like... The main learners, the scholars, and all that. But unfortunately, we never really got to that. So, it it's one of the th one of the things I'll always regret about not being able to get to Mythos about. Unfortunately. Uh, let's see. It's been a while. Since, well, I haven't had much to put up on the channel. So don't feel too bad about that because I have not been able to uh, to do much, unfortunately. Oh, but yeah, that's unfortunately where uh, that's unfortunately one of the things that it's always we're always going to regret. Marshy should have invited me sooner. Yeah, that's the joke right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. I would have found it funny if to watch Mario Ram Rowan with his hammer and stab him with it. That would have been funny, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that could be a what if one day. Honestly, imagine it was like a video game and depending on the character you were playing as, you had a different ending for the villain. Like, that specific character had the finishing blow on the villain. Makes me happy to see... Yeah. Um, what was another thing? Uh, there was a bit of a... There was a bit of a romance planned between my character and... On Adriatis, you know, fish lady. There was a bit of it, but we never really fleshed it out, nor did we find a way, a reason for it. We did plan, we did, we were thinking about it at one point, but never really happened. Instead, our characters just became really good friends in the end. Yeah. Andrea, yeah. Okay, I'm back. Ah! Hey. I tried to speedrun. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it with the exhaustion in your voice. I was talking a bit about the some of the what-ifs that we were planning on doing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, one of the what-ifs was the... Uh, when we were talking about early on, the rom a romance between my character and... Uh, Oh, Adriatic. right. There were at least two people that wanted romances. I'm not gonna lie. We decided not to do either one because I was explaining. We never... One? We never really had the time to plan it out. And two, eventually, I think it was decided that we couldn't really make it work because it was more of a... We couldn't figure out who... um How... What was gonna be the trigger for it and all that. So... It just didn't really work out mm -hmm. in the end. The other person was Chris. There are two people that wanted Adriatic. And then even Rex was like, well, he didn't want something, but he was like, Adriatic looks nice. Um, you know, as one does when appreciating beauty. Hey, hey 
<laughs> a strong warrior lady, man. Strong it's warrior like lady. It's, it's like Amazonians. <laughs> what is there not to like? Yeah. But, um, yeah, the Luxark, though, again, partial disaster. It took so many months before we could finally go get Cedric. And then we finally did get Cedric. And then, actually, we almost were out of the woods because... We would have had ZK there for one night, but we were pushing it really late. We'd finally gotten everything done, but the Vis would not regenerate, and we needed Vis for the fight, and it was underground, and stuff was broken, and so we eventually called it, and we're like, okay, we'll do it, like, the next day or something, or, like, next week oh. due to busy schedules, and then by then, ZK had left, and that's when we had to do the rewrite. Yeah, one of the things that um, I wish I had told you sooner was the Viz batteries, which can help you, which can let you still use Viz, Viz gauntlets and all that mm -hmm. stuff, even without Viz in the air. And then I learned about all that. I wish I had shown you how to fix it because desolate areas do not naturally regenerate Viz and all that. You need like plants and stuff like that to and actually. And even then, it. it takes a while. Yeah, well, but even if Cam made me one, we're talking about putting it in a gauntlet. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know we could just, like, give us that. And then okay. this was also before the time of, like, Flame having, like, made this crazy gauntlet that actually doesn't need Vis to function. <laughs> it yeah. just breaks the game. So, one of, so funny enough, I was actually explaining to them, too, that my character was supposed to be te eventually have, like, classes where he was going to actually teach. Mm -hmm. and what, And that was also a reason for you out of character to actually learn how to work uh, Thomcraft stuff. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Like, I wouldn't actually participate in doing the Thomcraft, but I would, like, um, I would, you know, at least know a little more so when we came across danger, I would understand a little bit. Yeah, and for, and mainly for stuff for, uh, it was also mainly stuff so that way you knew what to do for, uh, some setup stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Like setting like, up space. There's any time any character of mine, any fight has had Thomcraft, someone else had to make that for me. I still don't know how to use Thomcraft. I never had the time to... I had to make the true light spell. Yeah, no, I'm like, hey, Mario, make a spell that you would like to get. <laughs> this is your reward for being nice and showing up. <laughs> Hi, River. Library has always Hello. had a problem. Um, library has always had a problem of just not having people like we're a revolving door as i say um and you know nothing against those that kind of end up leaving but we never really from that formed a good solid group dynamic like me and mario have our dynamic sure right but that's two people but in the end we did finally get river and ghosty too even if they never officially joined library they were in library guys come on let's be real <laughs> um, we did, did have a great i will say we had some of the best npcs as te as honorary members of library mm -hmm. as the npcs yeah no the npcs in library i genuinely do adore them zechariah and jordan i always planned for them to be a thing it just took me 20 fucking years as part of my thought process was i was relying a little bit on hoping other like library people would interact with them to tell their stories because let me tell you it's a little boring writing for yourself okay so if i wrote a thing where i go up to zechariah and i unlock his true dark past right that's a little boring almost to me and, like, yeah, I do that for some arcs and some of that kind of stuff, but it, it's just, like, you know, I don't want to solo stream this alone, right? So I was kind of hoping, but, you know, people kept whatever, and then it just, it never happened. So I was still, for the most part, the closest with everyone for the, in Lyondell, for the most part, except then River came along and was like, Osiris, I like him. And I'm like, River, yeah. Osiris wasn't originally my character. <laughs> um, I don't, he don't got a backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked what were some of the optional shifts, uh, ships that were planned, and honestly, I think the only one you had planned canonically was the, the one between those two, huh? <laughs> yeah, those were the only two like NPC ships that I had planned. I had every now and then like actually ZK and Swan were meant to be a thing, but after ZK came back and we were doing some of the improv, I kind of just felt like it was off. I felt like. Well, this wasn't really addressed the way it should be. It's almost like we went too much back to normal and ZK was brushing it off a little too much. So it kind of just felt like it makes sense for Swan to be far more angry and for her to start to hate him. And for her to just be just angry at it. Because during some of those last conversations we got to have, yeah, Swan cared for him deeply, but she really was trying to get over the immense hurt that he dealt to her. Because he was the first person that she really opened up to. Because she had this bad habit of bottling it all up inside. And he was the first person because he was like, hey, don't do that. And she's like, okay, I'll try. 
And um, so, you know, she kind of, she let him have it. And what she wanted the most was for him to just tell her one reason. One reason why what she was saying was wrong. That's all she wanted. And she could maybe forgive him. She wanted him to argue for himself, but he didn't. And so at the very end, um, during the infiltration arc, I was kind of like, what if I give Swan a love interest? So I was looking at Easton and I'm like, you boy, what can we make you? And I wanted it to be kind of cute. I wanted it to be almost like a situation where, you know, both of them at first kind of dislike each other. They're a little annoying to work with. However, over time, they keep finding themselves working with each other. And it kind of get, just gets to a point where one day, they're without the other, and they kind of realize that they really hate that. They hate that more than anything else. Which is why Zechariah kind of, or not Zechariah, why Easton kind of was always like, I hate you, I may, but I hate Victor a lot more. And that was kind of the thing. He hates a lot of things far more than he hates Swan, because he loves Swan. And that was kind of the cute part of it, and he really doesn't want to let her go now. But he had to, and he knew that he had to, and so did Swan. And honestly, Easton is really sad in that way, I think. But I think he'll be okay. I think he'd do Swan proud, to be honest. I mean, like, I don't know if he'd ever necessarily move on, as in, I don't know, like, if he'd ever find someone else to love, per se, but I think he'd, he'd do okay for himself. Um, and that's and that was one of the things that is also sad, is if any, any NPC's gone into a relationship mm -hmm. with, a, with a vessel. Well, the thing about that, some people actually had time. Some people, Swan and Easton, like, really only realized that they loved each other a day or so before the end. So they didn't have that time to cherish between themselves. They didn't at all. Others at least have more fond memories, and Swan's just like, you were the person I wish that I had met sooner. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I was I was saying was, like, it's going to be, it's going to be sad is that anyone that had a relationship with an NPC right now? Mm-hmm. Gone. <laughs> London and Rex, Lucia and Rex, just them gone. Marshy and August, gone. Chris and I forget that one's name. It's just, it's sad, you know? It's so just, it hurt. It hurty, man. And then River, let's talk about your arc that didn't yet to be. So River, um... Mm -hmm. River started interacting a lot with Incendium NPCs, and we really Hold only on. met. Hmm? I got the build. I go. I'm going. I got go to the build. Three points still. We finished the build, or at least like kind of. It was like a last minute build, so it may have not gotten some of the touches other stuff did, but it's still really impressive. Um, I speed ran all this. But we just wouldn't have had the time to do it justice. That's the that's the problem that we had and this arc was meant to hurt all of you people too i was so fucking ready you don't even understand i was gonna sob i was gonna cry and the thing is like incendium is a dread only group so river is one of the only people that really could have gotten into this group and like explained it to us because there was meant to actually be two little arcs right there was meant to be the incendium arc which river was doing then eventually the soul death arc as i call it where Soul mm -hmm. would officially die, but in an interesting way. And that would divide Marshy, River, and I, actually, as people. And Marshy, for Marshy and I, that was going to be really interesting because our characters are, like, the best of friends. They never argue. You know? They, they never argue. So to have them at odds would have just killed, I think, a lot of people. And it would have destroyed Swan in a different way, which I'm always for. So to very yep. briefly go over Incendium. Incendium works... It, as in there is you know they have ranks right it's typical it's dread beat dread because these are more typical dramos dreads so they value strength over anything else and so river was to enter at the very bottom and she'd slowly um get more skilled and she'd actually go up a few ranks and in going up a few ranks she'd also have these little side quests where she learned more about the people around her and she'd get a best friend what was your best friend's name like lauren yeah. Lauren, she Lauren. was a really sleepy person, but she was, like, adorable in that way, and I loved her. She was this kind of, like, at times could really just spit facts, but also really sleepy, so half the time she'd fall asleep. Like, River would be talking about something, like, what do you think, Lauren? And she'd be, like, snoozing on the floor, and she'd be, and she'd be like, I Lauren! Am. Come on! Like, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I'm and, downstairs if you want to give him a small mm -hmm. little tour of what we did. Indeed. So we were going to have this tower, which would kind of lead down into things, but there's this pit that was meant to be filled with, um, like, uh, taint, liquid taint, or death. 
And so then we get into the build. Um, where is the staircase? There was meant to be a staircase that connected it up top, but this is the main room. This is the auditorium where River would have gotten her introduction and all that kind of stuff where everyone would be sitting around, all that type of jazz. And then there was this area where, um, now let me tell you, okay, this, we wouldn't have fully shown this, but every Incendium person has the Incendium marking branded on their skin. Um, but they give you therapy right after. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, all we were really going to do is kind of take River into the room and tell her like, yeah, you're getting it, you know, show this to insinuate that it would happen. And then we would have faded out. We're not having, just, we're not doing that. We're not showing that, right? We're not showing yeah, someone no, getting no, no. That's a horrifying <laughs> no. experience. Yeah. Um, so then after River would just be literally having therapy, like, okay, I know that hurt. Um, but anyway, in typical dread style of just yeah we uh i haven't thought about these characters in quite a while um but they were they were they were pretty much something so then we head down to the lower levels and this is pretty much divided by upper and lower if you are above a certain rank you get some luxury if you're below a certain rank you don't so this is the above you know there's actually some shops that you get to purchase stuff from there's a forge um over here is the like spell shop and stuff like that where you can buy stuff for Thomcraft. Uh, they, they were gonna have their own little type of currency and points, by the way. They weren't gonna use typical mythos stuff. Here's the potion shop. Uh, and actually one of the people River was gonna fight would be like a potion a galore user. Then this is kind of like a little garden area. Um, and around here then is everyone's dorms. They never really got to decorate them specially. So it's kind of just, this is the base look for, I'm pretty sure, like, all of them. Yeah. So this is you know, kind of cool. Range, River would but, eventually uh, get to stay up here once they realized that she was a vessel. She'd managed to go quite a few fights without realizing, but eventually at some point River would lose. Now, most of these fights don't end in death, because that's kind of where they draw the line of, like, hey, guys, we're not really, you know, our forces will diminish if we kill each other senselessly, so let's not. But very occasionally, one of the ranking challenges does end up with a death. Um... And so River was going to lose, but, and that's when they were going to learn that she's a vessel, and it would go like, oh my god, well, we need to take some special allowances for you, because you're really useful. So let's go down to the bottom floor, where we get a lot more, like, taint and stuff, and it's, like, real bad, but, you know, they liked it this way. You know, these are typical Dramos threads. These guys are from Dramos. I just read your chat. River joins a cult. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. Um, yeah. So, you know, there, there's rooms eventually. There's, like, each little... They were divided into, like, groups of five, and they'd each get a little training room attached to, like, an open layout room, just about. And so, you know, they'd all, you know, have their little space and stuff like that. But we also, you know, it just slid around, and you'd get to go places and, you know, stuff like that. But let, let's, let's skip a little bit to the soul death arc because that's where this really matters so for the soul death arc soul would eventually be coming home and she'd actually befriend cedric during this time period um and both of them would be really excited to get better and become like warriors and stuff like that real inspired and you know soul would then learn of these problems that we've been having with incendium and soul would be like i want to help as typical soul fashion does and we'd be like no soul we can't do that you know you're like nine <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna fight these people you're not even strong enough to do so and eventually we'd actually learn that soul had lied to me because one of the conditions for being able to go out and journey was that soul if you die at all you have to come home immediately and you have to tell me because your soul situation we don't know how many more respawns you have and that was the deal but soul lied to me and so she actually is on her last life uh but we don't fully know it's her last we're just like soul how many times did you die and she's like too many and it's like soul so we're like you know treating her like a, the fragile egg she is um so you know eventually we convince her to not go and fight except you know and we're all relieved we're like thank you soul for understanding i promise one day when you're older and once you've learned how to protect yourself better we'll let you you know fight alongside library of course we will you know, you're probably, you know, one, either you might be the one to inherit this damn place, you know? And then, you know, except Soul actually snuck off to go to my island where they'd actually, they'd taken over my island um, for the Taint Heart. And they'd taken it over and actually let me go to my island. This was meant to become all purple at some point. 
Let's just yeah. go down to the taint heart if I can find it. We have the crevasse. And we have the taint <laughs> heart down here. So she was meant to come here, but she'd get captured. And the thing is, she's a Twilian, which to them would be really curious, because Twilian and, you know, this stuff, you know, half the time, like, counteracts. And so one thing they do is, you know, Rex actually, as Cacalius, put this sign up here, and it was really funny. Um, but she'd, uh, she'd get put in this taint heart almost to marinate. And by the time we learned, we'd, of course, rush. I would desperately, you know, call whatever allies we could not on short notice, and we'd storm this place, and we'd fight, and we'd fight our way down here. Except, you know, and we'd, tr we'd see a soul within it, because we're searching for her desperately, and we try to get her out, except we can't. It seems like it's hurting her trying to remove her. Or, like, hurt, you know, hurting the heart seems to hurt her, so we can't cut her free. Except we're trying to fight off Incendium, and we're losing. So I make the decision to have to say, fall back. So we fall back, and that's when I'd go to Rex, actually. Except not for Rex. I'd actually be going for Flux, or X, as my character has been calling him. And my character would be like, please, please help me save my daughter. You made the damn Taint Heart, right? You can, you can, like, control it or something, right? Can't you? You can get my daughter out of there. Please. You know, hands and knees, like, please, for the love of God, I don't bend the knee for anyone. So. <laughs> um. So Flux would agree. And so we'd get Flux for a stream, actually. And they're getting ads during this great explanation. I know. <laughs> I, I, I got one, too. <laughs> Well, but I guess I can pause for just a moment. Only a moment. <laughs> Only a moment. Very squishy. I must speed because there's still more story to tell and Ovek wants to chat about an arc that never got to occur. And there's so much mm -hmm. that never got to occur. <laughs> Fellas, I'm going to make a YouTube stream, or not a YouTube stream, I'm gonna stream at some point where I talk about this more, but actually I rework what I wish I'd done with my character. And just some arcs, some changes I wish I'd made. I'll go through as much of my fucking timeline as I can remember. So don't worry uh, if I don't get to it all today or here. We'll get to it at some point. Because God, that just might be a stream I, I script, or if it takes me too long to get around to doing it, I'll just wing it. As I typically do. Anyhow, are y'all free from the ads yet? Because I have clearly no patience. Alrighty. So continuing then. Um, so we, I'd go to, I'd go to Flux and or X and I'd be like, hey, please help me save my daughter. And he'd agree. So we get flux for the stream, and so we pretty much, we gather up some peacekeepers as well, because we actually have a little bit of time to gather up more allies, and then we storm my island again. This time better prepared, but so are they. They've actually set up a lot more fortifications this time. So it's pretty much a fight throughout the thing. It was kind of, the way I was envisioning it was a little bit of a mini vanguard takeover. Not as in the same things, but we split into groups almost to handle different aspects in that stream, which is what I was more so envisioning. So there'd be almost two groups, one to handle almost above ground, and the second to help me storm the damn place to get down into it to the heart. Because they'd set up some different, you know, things. They'd have sealed up the earth, and there'd be a different way to get down in here. So, you know, one by one, the group would fall off to, like, fight someone. You know, you know, like, let, let me continue on, almost, type deal. And eventually, it's just me and Flux in the main chamber. And Flux, you know, he does his shit, and he gets Soul out, except Soul has been morphed beyond belief she's you know grown into this creature this flux out of their mind creature and we're like soul is that is that you and she's just she starts attacking and this is actually where a drawing was meant to be from this was actually where originally i was meant to learn my overcharge ability um because out of emotional distress i activate it that's how a lot of swan's abilities work out of like either emotional stress or something she learns something um, and in this drawing that I did, uh, which you may know of, it's like lightning sparking all around Swan. She's cut all over and she's crying. That's, that's that drawing. It's because Swan wasn't fighting back. That's the thing I was like mentioning parts. Like, you know, it's interesting how she's not holding a weapon. That's because she refused in the beginning to draw her sword, her blade, her axe against her daughter. 
Except eventually, you know, Flux is like, she's been marinating in there too long. You know, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing I can do. And so I'm kind of faced with this thing of like, this soul is now so much more powerful. She's phenomenally more powerful. And I have to make this choice of whether or not to kill her or not. There's no way to really contain her. She'll get out and she'll start massacring people. And that's the choice of, I know she wouldn't want that. So I have to put her down. So Swan, you know, sad, crying, overcharges and has to fight her daughter. And that's, you know, what that drawing was to represent. And that's the arcs we could have gotten. But after that, after that whole thing, um, I get up. I'm on my last legs because I've overcharged. I'm running out of this and I can't take in enough to really stay up. But uh, there's this one person, Lauren, this one Incendium <sighs> member that surrenders. And I walk up and I say something along the lines of, who said I was accepting? And he surrender. And I kill her out of just that sheer <laughs> anger. And so Rivers, you're like, no, because this is her best friend. And this yeah. entire time, River hasn't told us about Incendium. Almost like, yeah, let's just keep my two friends separate, you know? And the, um, there was a picture I also drew. It's on Twitter, too. Um, it was a very Angie Swan, and that was the drawing. Mm -hmm. I, never re I never iterated on it. I just said Angie Swan. Mm -hmm. I left it at that. <laughs> That was that was the drawing for mm -hmm. that part. And so, you know, River would be like, no! And then Swan would literally, would, unable to get any answers out of Swan, Swan would then collapse because, you know, she's literally dying of oxygen, <laughs> no oxygen. She just, you know, she's overcharged. Too much vis is lost. You know, she'd actually finally conk out for the first time. Um, but later after she wakes, she swears to kill every single last one of them. And so that's where it was meant to be. Anyone that escapes, she'd hunt down. Those were meant to be my following streams. I'm hunting down Incendium with any allies that will be with me. And that's where Marshy and River are trying to save them. They're like, Swan, don't kill them. Like, surely they weren't a part of it. And that's kind of where we start getting differences because Swan is clearly vengeful. She's bloodthirsty. She wants to kill these people out of vengeance for soul and they don't want her to. And Swan's like, you don't stand in my way, not you. And they're like, I'm sorry, we can't let you do this. And Swan's like, well, then you leave me no choice. And that's where they'd be opposed for a while in this horrid way of like, they're trying to save all these other Incendium people and Swan's trying to kill them all. And that was that, really. I would have been sobbing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. Briefly returning to Cognitio, she was not really only meant to get one stream, but I kind of like almost the turn we had of like, we're after infiltration, we smoothly move into her. But what I would have liked to do, what I wanted to do, but I didn't have the time, what I imagined when Cognitio died, she's there, Lux is holding on to her, is that her life is flashing before her eyes and, um, you know, accidentally she's conveying these same memories into and thoughts to Lux because she can do that. Because they can almost together be a projector. <laughs> um, the only thing is, though, um, later I imagine that Lux would show Swan what he saw, but there wasn't time for that. And that's how we'd actually learn of Medea's backstory along with her eventually developing as a ghost. It's just, you know, there wasn't time for that. The only inter the interesting thing about that, though, is when Lux is conveying it to me, I can't, he, Lux can't do the sound. He can't do the feelings. All he can do is manipulate what I see. So that's where that comes of it. That's why anything after, you know, there's been no words, no sound, because they can't, you know, produce the voice part of it, because that was all cognitio. So that's why when Kagishi was removed from the equation, there was so much lost. Other than Gaia, though, I think I've talked about most of my main arcs and library stuff, haven't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would talk a lot about the NPCs and what stuff they were meant to have, but I don't think I have time for that. So... You just, you'll just have to look out for that other video at some point. And even then, I might just keep a few cards at my sleeve. I know there were some questions on, like, you know, my Twitter or whatever, and I may not have time to answer those, but I'll make sure to answer them some other time. I may just respond on Twitter. Yeah, that, that's, what I, that's where I'm going. I'm going to head to OVAC now.
So, fellas, I'm a head off because mm-hmm. Ovec wants to steal me, and we have about, you know, whatever, maybe 35 minutes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, does Rex want everyone over there, or...? Yeah, you can hop in there once you're yeah. done talking about your personal stuff and any other arcs. Mm-hmm. Hello! You've got you me now. Bitch. I tried! <laughs> I had I to unload Roche! You just ended your stream! It's okay, we can talk about it anyways. Yeah, I'm still I'll going, talk about I'm still it on going, yours. I'm just still going. Let me pull up that fucking document. If I can even still find it. <laughs> Instantaneous, you bitch. Yeah. Yeah, I just ended my stream literally like milliseconds ago. Oh my god. You bastard. I would, you, you couldn't have messaged me? You couldn't have hopped over? My voice I is for so gore. You forgot. What did we even call that? East Haven? Maybe East Haven? Mm. No. What did we call this? Ovec, maybe? If I type Augments. in Ovec. Augments! Oh, that was so good. That is a hell of a document. <laughs> oh, there's so much oh. in ah! <laughs> Vic Live has brought the Calvary yeah. of Seven. Hello, fellas. My voice is trying to go. Do you hear how loud I fucking shouted for my lines? <laughs> my voice has been shot the, like, the entire weekend. Okay, where do we start? Do we want to talk about the original version and then get into like the the attempted revision that was like no, and then we eventually kind of decided not to? Or to like take the equal I parts? Mean, the revision bit is virtually like... I don't think we ever got around to changing too much. Well, the revision was, like, what I kind of was like, hey, here, this is my thoughts on it, looking at it, like, a while later, which did actually change a lot of things, technically. More like it took out some parts, because, to me, like, the arc was, like, I loved a lot of the concepts, but to me, it kind of was putting together two things that kind of were very weird together. We had two different, like, good-ish things. You liked one, and I liked the other. Yeah. And we both were like, yeah, the other part's kind of weak. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just, together, I don't think they fit well, but on their own, they were excellent. And that was the problem. Um, basically, it was um, like a three-chapter thing, which I guess... Li- or no, wait, was it... Yeah, three chapters. Which I guess later got uh, reworked into the Unanimous Takeover. Mm-hmm. Just that, like, system. The first chapter was going to be... We were trying to, like... Because I think, what's it called? I wanted to stray away from the edict and, like, you know, be an original mythos story where it's like, oh, there are more bad in the world than edict. Mm-hmm. And what better place to start than, like, you know, Teramos East Haven where there's so much cool-ass technology. What if there's just, like, cyborgs and shit? Like, weird-ass anti-swans. <laughs> and they're all anti-magic and shit. Mm-hmm. And, um... Yeah, we we're gonna have like a lot more puzzles in it. That was also an issue. We, neither of us are smart enough to make puzzles. <laughs> the puzzles like, were just gonna be so time consuming. <laughs> and uh, cool ass like tech combat, whatever that meant. Mm-hmm. We we're gonna just invent some cool stuff, like expand upon cyborgs and other stuff. Because yeah, there's me. Yeah, there's Lily. But what about people that lean into it? And that kind of ended up being a little bit shown with Victor, but we could have done more. Because the thing with Victor in the infiltration arc, he did also overcharge like I did. It was a different way because he doesn't run off this. He's not as inefficient. Um, but, you know, we could have done a lot of that type of stuff with these cyborgs, which we ended up calling the, their group Augments. Because they, you know, everyone awesome. in that group was cybernetic in some way. And we were going to do some funky thing to get us all in at some point to, like, you know, uh, undercover almost. And I was fine, obviously. I'm a cyborg. But the others that were going to be coming along weren't. I think Cam and Lily were contenders for people coming along, right? I know Cam, I think, was locked in. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things I, like, super love about Mythos is just being able to expand upon the world building. Because Rex and Candy are so, so very, like, open and chill about it. And so... Like, in the fucking Kane cinematic, 
establishing that like you could just like what's it called? I had the idea so long ago where I was like, you know, what if it was, you know, you're just kind of like a gauntlet channels the spell a little bit. And so if you just use the gaunt or the spell as a grenade itself, it's just a hypercharged version of the spell. And so yeah. that's what I did in like the cane cinematic where, you know, I busted open the wind spell and it just fucking beamed both me and Ellie. Tim fucking Timbuktu. And that eventually was, like, yeah, was used sick. even in infiltration when I pretty much overcharged a fire folk eye to make the largest explosion known to man. Right. Like it's I love expanding on the world building. It's one of the coolest things that I think stories like this have to offer. Um, there was, yeah, with the limbo, the limbo stuff for uh, Leonidas takeover, that was also expanding upon the world building. Where it's like, my what if for that arc was, my entire character struggle is, oh no, I can't let my evil sword take over. Mm -hmm. So why don't we let it and see what happens with the story? Exactly. And then that happens, and then it's like, okay, what if Ovek now tries to log back in? There's no way he just gets the body back. We've established this. Where does he go? And it's like, how about he just goes inside his own head and his own memories? What's that look like? I don't know. Maybe just, like, a thin little, like, fucking ocean. And then you got, like, Ananus memories where it's just, like, a mansion hallway sort of thing. I don't know. I just really love pushing the limits of the world building and just, like... Mm -hmm establishing shit and for this we most certainly were um because we are actually going to give a reason for teramos almost to become a little bit depowered in technology oh fuck yeah yeah remember the like em em p yeah, was yeah, it yeah. We'll, we'll work through it we'll work yeah through it. so arc one in chapter one was gonna be like i think i got scammed yeah you did or some shit got scammed and we tracked down this like one dude or chick i don't remember I don't think we'd gotten that far with establishment. I think they their name was going to be, fuck, what Cyber. was it? Cyber, yeah. Arc. That was, I think, the the final nail in the coffin for the arc. <laughs> no, we like, I think we're gonna like start making me power armor, or some fancy armor shit. Well, we'd already made you power armor. We were working yeah, to was... upgrade it. We were gonna upgrade it with something. Man, I kind of wish that I got to do that character design thing. I was gonna have a um. The holographic armor plates, which I guess eventually kind of materialized with Ananas. It wasn't holographic, it was just little armor plates, but I wanted that sort of design mm -hmm. where various armor plates around that did form a full shield of armor. It was just, you know, a hologram. Yeah. Sick idea. I like that character design. But I, after, I think down on the first Texas trip, I also hit the uh, idea of like, what if I had a fully mechanical caster's gauntlet where it was like super just steampunky and like gears and you know there's no solid basis it's just like a bunch of you know lines and fancy like oh that's so cool covering. i guess eventually that idea saw the light of day i completely forgot button. you had that idea you had one that like just looked like a gauntlet well yeah i Mine didn't exactly have like time really to try to reskin but it was meant to yeah. pretty much be on the inside at least it was completely technological because it needed to blend in right but yours was going to be, like, all steampunky and really cool. Hmm. But the arc was going to have, like, us trying to track down these, like, East Haven thefts and shit. When eventually, um... We get looped the, into something, like, far greater than just the yeah, theft. Cyber, and we're like, oh, God. Cyber pulls up and goes, hey, I'm a cyborg. How about, you know, all these, you know, weaker human beings? You, you could be better. You're already a bit of robot. How about you get more robot and be better? Magic sucks. People suck without technology. <laughs> and then we were going to bring in Cam there. Mm -hmm. Because um, we'd eventually learned that these guys wanted to take all magic from East yeah. Haven. And actually, they wanted to destroy magic, and just period. And how they wanted to do that was they more or less wanted to destroy this, which is a problem. So to learn more, we were going to go undercover, and we were going to get Cam and Ovac, and we were going to somehow, like, disguise them, because they'd have a way to check if you're, like, a cyborg or some shit. Um, and we'd have to fool them, at least for those two. And we were going to get in there and, like, learn shit. But while doing that, I think we were going to learn, like, at least in the original, like, thought, we were going to learn about some brothers or something. And this was kind of where stuff starts to get a little disjointed, where, like, these two ideas were really nice. It's just This was my favorite part of the Yeah, this was shitter. his favorite part. 
Um, I can rant about this. Yeah, I'll let you in a second. This is where it kind of was like, both of these are good ideas. They probably just did not belong together because they didn't work the best. Mm. Continue now. <laughs> so, I think at some point we're going to throw me in prison. We're going to have like a cool prison breakup on the remake. Um, did we not write? Hmm? I don't think we ever transcribed the cool. We stuff. might have not. Man, that's crazy. Cause I Weren't we going to get framed for something? They were going to think we were causing some destruction because... Yeah, they were going to make, like, robots of us, and we were going to yeah. get framed, and I think that's why we got arrested. But then mm -hmm. there was, like, the prison break, and then there was going to be some, like, Indiana Jonesing where there were going to be some, like, loose streams where we could just go, like, little dungeon to dungeon and, like, uncover shit, and it would have little fragments of lore mm -hmm. until eventually we were going to find this, like, big-ass fucking cavern. That had, like, a magic seal. We were going to somehow break it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because pretty much and it was us against them. We were racing for this because they wanted to figure this stuff out, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, I just really want to mention this jail bit because it's funny. Uh, Ovek was going to, you know, break out first, but he'd have to come back for me. And they just find me while I'm trying to be like, I literally don't know how to use Thomcraft. I don't know how to function a gauntlet, my dude. How could this be me? I literally don't know how to do any of this. And then Ovek would, like, break me out almost as I, almost as I've, like, convinced them that I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And then it's like, fuck, I nearly had it, Ovek. And it's like, well, it's too late now. Let's go. We gotta run. And so we're on the run then. <laughs> yeah. But we were gonna, yeah, be racing these guys pretty much. And did we get there at the same time as them? As them? Uh, it was either a little after or a little before. Because I know eventually we, like, break the magic seal. We go in and... There's, like, these two ancient fucking brothers. And I think it was, like, both learned magic or some shit? And then one went down a really bad path? Mm-hmm. And the other was trying to pretty much stop them. It might have been that one brother was magical and the other wasn't. And the one that wasn't was trying to stop the magic brother from, like, destroying shit. Either or, you, whether they both had magic or not, they pretty much have been locked in, like, in this battle for God yeah. knows how long. And so I think we're gonna, like figure some way out to kill the evil one and then ah, there was yeah some I don't know it was a crazy ass arc overall it was way too ambitious for literally just like me you and mm -hmm. a little bit of Karen. and this is where it kind of just didn't connect because we were focusing a lot on not magic and then suddenly in comes these magic people and we were kind of going to work mm -hmm. them in as in we kind of get them away so that the people can't use them and they end up protecting East Haven and helping them after a lot of their stuff goes down for reasons um, but after that, they'd be like, well, plan B. And we'd be like, plan B? What are you talking about? <laughs> and we'd find that they have this, like, wave that's going to destroy the this. Which, you know, I this know. isn't everything. So that means yeah. destroy just casually everything. So they're doing the edict's job for them, I guess. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Anyhow, the only, like, g good thing was that this couldn't at least hit the entire world all at once, right? Um, yeah, it probably would just devastate like Teramos. And then it would temporarily fuck us over? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, oh. It might, in the area, when we got to the place, it would be fucking with the Vis in the air, like in the uh, area. Yeah. It wouldn't be destroying it entirely, it would just be fucking it over so we didn't really have our magic to rely on, so we got to really show off the cool tech. So we'd be getting there and we'd have to stop this, and the thing is that we really meant to emphasize on is that there was no good choice here. We literally could choose between one evil and a lesser evil. That's all we had, because we couldn't stop this entirely. There was absolutely no way we could. What we couldn't do, however, was we could turn this wave into a giant EMP wave, which would destroy their tech, which is really bad for East Haven and all other places because Teramos relies on technology. That was our only choice, though. It's either that or kill everyone in Teramos. So, of course, we do it, and it just... Boom. Goes down. And it probably would fuck me over for a short period of time. I don't know if it, how it would affect cyborgs, but probably wouldn't kill me at least. Um, so there's that, pretty much. And that's kind of how that was going to go. And then we returned to East Haven almost still criminals, kind of. Because, like, we had to make that choice. And it's kind of like people are like, you know, mad at us for it. But at the end of the day, we know that we saved them because there was no other choice that we really can make. It's kind of one of those like feel bad, but, you know, we did what we had to. And that was the kind of original arc. 
Which I, I think... I, I am finding it interesting how much of this did kind of get reused in the Amanda's Takeover stuff. <laughs> that I hadn't even thought about. Oh? Because, I mean, like... Fucking becoming an East Haven fugitive for the, you know... Yeah, that's true. ...of time. That got reused. The sort of, like, breaking it up into acts and chapters or whatever. Mm -hmm. That got reused. What else? Um... Well, then it wasn't going to destroy my cybernetics, because if that happened, I'd literally just be dying and respawning over and over again. Swan literally has vital organs that are <laughs> cybernetic, my dude. She cannot live without them. She can, just not. Yeah, no, she she dies almost instantly. I'm pretty sure half her heart is at least cybernetic. <laughs> just... The fun thing I want to comment about um, this fucking document with the arc, though, the amount of comments... Because what would happen is I think we both had edit access. And mm -hmm. so one of us would write a bunch of shit and then the, send it to the other and be like, all right, so I did some stuff. And then they, the other would go, all right, and then comment all over the place. I think it started with me. Mm -hmm. And then I sent it back and I'm like, all right, there's a few comments on it, uh, just like little feedback points. I didn't want to change what you had. And so then you would reply to all those comments. Yeah. You have like paragraphs. We would have discussions in comment the comment. <laughs> That was great. Yeah, there's a fucking three paragraph, like, I feel like if we're bringing Kamen for the arc, it has to be at the start. I can speak from the blah, 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 blah. I feel like Dragon Kamen, and potentially we can have to see. And then let's see, let's see. Potentially in disguise, it stands to reason that Cyber being an augment would be wired up with a... Uh, something. And then I just reply, disguises are just fun, too. <laughs> Great oh, comment. God, here we go. I think we were told during the pitch that East Haven doesn't super dislike magic. They just back off. They're more tech focused. Lucha runs a potion shop. Augments are like fucking just conversating with themselves. Here we go. Here we go. My tick is confrontation should be safe or one of the ruins and in person. If we go into the blah, 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 blah. And then you, yeah. As well as in fugitive bit through arc three, could be interesting to Heisenberg just get the house vandalized because I'm supposedly fucking shit up. During the house tear up twice it seems repetitive. And then you reply, like, cyber getting overwritten would be really cool with their side men there. And I reply with, like, a timestamp. Here we go. Runes should be all, like, linking. And then you reply. And then non confronts really, blah, 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 blah. Holy shit. There's a one, two, three, four, five paragraph thing that you then reply with, like, a three paragraph thing. And there's this one, two paragraphs, paragraph, sentence, sentence. There's so much. Holy we shit. We had so this? much discussion. One, two, three, we could have done five, this. Six, seven. We could have done this Seven in just a paragraph comment, followed by a single sentence, and then you reply like two sentences. <laughs> Normally, Ooh. I'm the one sending paragraphs. <laughs> oh my god! I was just like fucking writing. My so, uh oh, indeed. My thoughts on like you know re re like revising almost a little bit. I didn't really consider the brother part because to me that should be removed. Which probably what we should have done is we should have taken them and made them their separate arcs and then still done them together, is what right. we probably should have done. Um, that's our bad, really. Uh, but it was really meant to be that Cyber was actually, like, the daughter of this guy. And this guy was, like, some conniving politician that wanted to just, you know, outlaw all magic in East Haven through, like, laws and stuff. And when we'd be coming through dealing with Ovex's little situation, which would either be from a scam or just us trying to figure out how, like, Ovex shop and trying to get it back... Uh, he'd kind of stop and be like hey about this and we'd kind of be busy so we'd be like nah so uh, but i'd seem like partially interested because in what he's saying is like no magic and i'm like i like the sound of that <laughs> so um at some point we like interact with him more though because we have to go through some stupid court stuff to like get it back because it's east haven the process is not going to be simple or easy um and i forget the initial lead-ins really I think eventually at some point he talks to us more and he tries to get us to like help him with it, right? Like help pitch this. It's like, hey, you two are vessels, right? I mean, you may not be the most known, but at least one of you are. Like, hey, Ovec, you know, you're at least a little known to this city. You know, your word would do a lot for this. And Ovec's like, no, no not, not, I, I'm here to do my thing and like I'm not getting into trouble, pretty much. I've had enough trouble, right? Mm. So 
the guy gets a little pissed. And so at some point, because he's like, oh, they both just came into town. This would work really well. He builds these like little robot things to pretty much sabotage us. And so we wake up literally in the middle of the night with them hunting after us. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? Because we have no clue. We literally just, you know, we're staying around for the bureaucratic process, right? And I'm being dragged along because at this point we weren't like still on the best of terms. It's kind of like we both ended on notes. Not that we hate each other. It's kind of like we haven't talked since the shit went wrong. Mm -hmm. So at some point Ovik was going to come to my door and be like, can you help? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. So, you know, this is us rebonding. <laughs> Show you the and so we have to hide out in like his basement or something of his place but at some point cyber ends up having to help us get away and we're like who the fuck are you and she's like look okay this stuff's going a little whack here so pretty much uh cyber wants to stop this guy because he's doing this because cyber when she was younger was hurt and she's partially cyborg because of it and augments was actually meant to be less of a well they used to be not the worst group but um it was actually a support group made for his daughter but eventually he wanted to start using these people like hey we've all been hurt by magic in some way or another you know like look at what's happened to us let's stop it and they kind of became radicalized so cyber left she once was the leader of the group and now she's not pretty much it became it went from help group to fuck let's you know become i guess a rebellion so shit ain't going well and now they're using like oh the vessels came and did this to us if we outlawed magic they wouldn't have been able to bring this in here and stuff like that so we're having to like sneak around i forget some things or another like here and there because it's been like 20 years and i'm not going to take the time to reread the document because it would take me too long yeah. but we kind of continue from there i think at some point we were still going to sneak into the augments place and i was going to do some funky shit with this and like typing like i'd probably chug some machina or whatever, metallum, whatever fucking this stuff, and then I'd use, I'd, like, almost leave a, a trace on, like, Ovik and them, so with any scanners, it would pick up as, there's some metal here, boys, and that was the bullshit reason, uh, because short of giving them cybernetics, I don't know what we're gonna do, maybe we're about to give them an arm brace that looked real, real, um, but after that, we kind of nearly get caught at some points, and, We'd go try to, like, confront him at some point. We'd be, like, down to the wire. Um, because we, we try to stop him politically, right? We try to stop him. And I think we manage. But after that, he's like, oh, no. And so we're in his house, and we're trying to fight him or something. And he does, like, he literally does this. He, he goes to his plan B, which is to wipe out, you know, dismiss entirely. Because if, you know, we, we, uh, we messed up his vote, so it didn't go through. And we managed to clear our names eventually. But... Um, he sets off this, like, anti vis thing, which, like, destroys all the vis in the area, almost. Like, takes it from the air. It's like, oh, this just needs a little tweaking. And I literally just collapse to the floor. Like, I'm just gone. And it's like, Swan? <laughs> That's the first sign something's wrong. Swan's just gone. It's instantaneous. It's like, fair fucking well, nights out. And then suddenly, the floor kind of breaks through underneath them, and they go tumbling into the depths of Old East Haven. Um, which, this part was not very solid in my rewrite, I will admit. Uh, we wanted to do some cool stuff with, like, gliders in East Haven and, like, some really cool old tech to, like, get around. And this was kind of like, how do we introduce it? This was my really weak excuse of, like, us having to use gliders. So this was, we were going to fall into an old gliding course. And we would have had our gliders before this. It's just, like, we have to glide. I remember so much more of this than me. My memory tends to remember stories a lot better. <laughs> um... But we're gonna fall down pretty much, and Ovik's like, Swan, Swan, you're not breathing. What the fuck? Swan! So he quickly, like, gets a vis crystal. He finds one. He, like, he's scrambling, or, like, this vis battery, and he, like, breaks it, making some more vis for me. And it's like, oh, thank fucking God, because I start breathing again, and I wake up. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what occurred? I remember us fighting this guy, and then I was gone. And he's like, yeah, it's real bad. This guy is literally, I don't know what he did, but he's planning on destroying all the vis. And Cyber's like, this is really, really bad. Um... So we pretty much, we use our gliding skills and we learn a little more about Old East Haven and then we get out of there and we're having to come find this place. And we use some method, I don't remember what, to narrow down the location. And so we run and we get there. And um, it's this whole fight where we have to use all of our skills upward because there's like very, like, there's like very little vis in the air. I'm, running, I'm probably running off of batteries right now. We probably made like a small stockpile and I'm using them just like inhalers. <laughs> and I'm like, ha ha, this is great. And so we're making our way slowly up this like tall ass tower. 
and eventually when we get up to the top this dude do some does some funky shit i don't remember the full aspects of the boss fight but it was gonna be really cool i do know that uh, i kind of imagined almost like debris like almost statically floating in the air and like going around and stuff and then you know we'd have to fight to keep you know the guy off of us so we could do the thing eventually this guy um he doesn't want to hurt his daughter he really doesn't but he won't listen to her into and he doesn't until the very end where he's like i'm so sorry and so then he kind of helps us like stop his own creation but in the process he dies and we turn it into this emp wave in which she's like father no and so then we're all kind of like you know down on the ground after the aftermath and we're like oh shit and we're like we're gonna be remembered badly for this like still and that's kind of like you know we three you know not exiled from east haven kind of we're just not liked there if we were to ever visit we'd probably have to wear disguises and that would have taken out like most of the cyber soldiers most of like any tech they really had a lot of it just gone they would have had to like rebuild it all it's short-circuited it's it's just fried and that was that arc like the the my version at least from the like revisit and then for Ovex, we probably would have focused a lot more on, like, these cool legends. Like, after that, like, we probably would have done this one first. So then after that, Cyber, Ovex, and I, maybe, and Kaelin, or whoever, you know, we could go then adventuring into these ruins and then about magic so we could find maybe a solution for protection for, like, East Haven and all that. So maybe we could at least redeem ourselves a little bit in their eyes. And that would have been, like, probably the connection we did. So it's sad that it never happened, because, like, Augments was so cool. <laughs> it was definitely, like, something. I think there was a lot of flaws, mm -hmm. which I remember, because we thought it was, like, the shit when we planned it, like, because it was during, like, the dungeon, like, Kane dungeon shit, mm -hmm. so I couldn't do it yet. And we're like, oh, we'll come back to it later. And then I remember sitting you down in a call in April or some shit and being like, all right, let's make this happen. And then we, like, all right, let's go over the strong points of the arc. And then... I was like, yeah, so I think this is, like, a really good point. And you're like, eh, that's a little bit of the weaker end. I'm like, mm -hmm. fuck. I'm pretty sure I was, like, pissed at the end of that call. Where I was just like, yeah, I suppose we're just going to have to scrap this shit. Like, come on, Yeah, man. we kind of both were, like, a little unhappy. But I think, yeah. like, we it really, like, the end. It's not like both they, they were the weak points. If they were together, one of them was weak. It's just they didn't fit the best together. But if done separately, they were both really strong. Yeah. Because it could make sense that East Haven had maybe some magical past that kind of led to them not being so magic anymore. That that's a that's a you know groundwork to expand upon. But it also you know if we're doing a lot of stuff with like cyborgs and these augments and all of this technological stuff, um, it makes sense to stray a little bit from the magic side of things because we're focusing on this technology. So if we during the arc find these magic brothers that they're for some reason seeking, which why would these augment people who want to destroy magic seek magic to destroy magic? It's kind of just like. So if we had taken them and done them separately, but, like, still had them connected to each other, as in cause and effect, it would have been so good. Yeah. Well, lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, who knows, you know? I'm going to keep this in the back of my mind. Let's make it as a standalone roleplay. <laughs> that would be a little anticlimactic, considering we just told the whole fucking plot. <laughs> no. No, surely not. Surely Everyone in not. chat, forget. Forget what you just heard. Man. God, I'd forgotten Such about this cool arc shit. until you brought it up again, which may seem odd considering I just recited so much shit from it, but yeah. my brain doesn't. It, it blends so well into your memories, the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, huh? <laughs> Whatever, it's lore yeah, stuff. My memory is like, oh yeah, I'll work. I'll remember, you know, even like, you know, a year later about this shit, like just really well. Okay. But if it, if you give me something actually probably important to life to remember, it's like, nope, it's gone. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care enough apparently for it to get in my brain. Yep. Thus is the life. <sighs> I've just ordered my own mythos speech. Dude, I need to wait a little before I do that. I need to, like, see if I have some money after. Actually, let me look at what questions I have for just me real quick, because we have a little bit more time before the final hour. As my voice is still trying to crack, it's trying to I think die. I can make a McDonald's in 15 minutes. Let's see. McDonald's is... Hmm. 
If you could have changed how your character went about things or looked or how they acted, would you? Yes. Is this in the Q&A chat? Uh, this is in my, I did a separate little thing like, oh. hey, if you any, specifically for me. The answer is no. yes. A lot of things, actually. Um, Design-wise, she started off not the best, and I don't think all of her designs were bad. It's just they weren't what I was going for. If I was this scholarly Bring person... Swan with tits. <laughs> she has tits. I just can't draw no, half the time. I'm talking like the engineer one that has just fucking honkers. <laughs> I revisited it briefly during the Power Armor stream. I was like, you know, we're, we're making shit. Yeah. I might as well get engineer mode. Swan busts it out. <laughs> that was that was uh, when the designs were getting a little better. Um, I don't think necessarily Swan's like uh, cape scarf design was bad. It's just I don't think it translated the best to the skin. Because the hair did not fully go, and I wanted to die. Um, that was my bad. I should have, like, mentioned and been like, Hey, Ruta, can you fix that? And then I didn't, because I'm the worst. But I think we didn't really get the full essence of Mythos Swan until we I did the final design for her, which is the Scholar Swan skin. This design really is the one that, you know, she has her glasses. Uh, you know, her hair is done like this. It's up in a bun. She has this blouse. She has this, like, flowy, uh, you know, uh, Let's see if I can speed stuff. I'm so, I'm so hungry, too. <laughs> um, you know, this is the design that really screamed Mythos Swan. As for, like, how she acted, I do not like Mythos Swan, early Mythos Swan. I will, I will preach that from the rooftops. I don't like how she was. I really don't. Um, and she was very wishy-washy and all over the place. I just don't like how I did her. But then again... That's probably because I had no plan going in for her on how she'd act or be, so I kind of defaulted to myself, and then when I tried to characterize her, it was a little different from me, so it's kind of, that's why she kept going back and forth. And then one major thing that I would change, one major thing, is in the beginning of Mythos, we didn't, like, oftentimes we'd try to do plot without letting other content creators know, so, like, stuff would be set up for us, and we wouldn't know anything about it. We'd, be, we'd go in blind, which ended up leaving a lot of us, like, in the dark, which meant we missed a lot of stuff. Um, but for Rex, who obviously was, like, making a lot of it new, it was just a learning process. I'm not mad, right? This is, this is, like, years ago. So I'm not, like, I'm not mad, and I really wasn't. I understood. It's just, it was a learning process. That wasn't the best way to do things, because it kind of made library look stupid. I'm not gonna lie. It really did. It's like, oh, yeah, the library is the mistake maker, because every single time, Rex and them would come in and fix what we did, and or rediscover what we'd missed, because we'd miss things, inevitably. So we very quickly started doing things differently. But other than that, there was the, the, I would have never stolen those books. Or if I had, I would have been sure of it in the first place and I would have tried to hide it. And the conflict with Rex, I wouldn't have tried to make it up. It would have been so much more interesting. My character was like, so what if I stole from you, huh? You, you know, we would have given you all this stuff and this help for free. And you want us, you want to charge us for it. You know, how, how fucking dare you? It would have been so much more interesting if I had done that, fueled that rivalry, if I'd been more at his throat, it would have been so much better. And I should have been more assertive, just angry even, as a character. I shouldn't have, like, there's a lot of things I wish I would have done differently. I should have probably played more into that anger, maybe a little bit, or just, you know, whatever. I should have played my character more like a Batman sort of type, as in, they have a lot of plans for everything. Those plans may not all work, but at least they've tried to chart out every single possible outcome and account for it. I should have played into the fact where Swan is a thinker. Even if she isn't as good as, a, you know, physically fighting, you know, which she did eventually learn, because, I mean, it's been a long time, it's been two years, she did learn how to wield an axe, okay? <laughs> So, you know, I should have played into that. That's one of my biggest regrets. That could have been so much more interesting instead of playing the pitiful, you know, how dare you kill us over and over again card. Like, that's a character, sure. But I feel like that char that type of character is more interesting to see if they're an NPC being persecuted for no reason. And then you step in and you help them. That makes it a little more interesting. Not to see from the content creator's eyes as they lay down there like a freaking doormat. That's not interesting. It's not. It's not really. So that's one of the major things that I would have changed at the very least. And considering we've got 10 minutes, time to speed run any other questions, which I may not be able to if these questions are complicated. If you had more time to flesh out your NPCs more, how would you do it and why? I briefly touched on this. Library was meant to kind of interact almost a little bit more with some of these characters, right? Library was meant to, you know, at times pick their favorites, form bonds, so that way they could more so 
discover them. I was going to do one or two and I may tag along, right? But it was really meant to be. But of course, since library was more of a revolving door, that never really happened. Mario, of course, was really bold and had then his own village. So like Mario, you know, understandable. River was doing a good job with Osiris. And of course, with Medea, Ghosty was doing a good job too. So eventually that kind of started happening. It's just, it was too little too late almost. So that was kind of, you know, that whole thing. Um, and I could tell you about all of their stories. I could, but I'm going to keep those in my back pocket, really, for them. Um, but Jordan and Zechariah, I would have had, I would have had them get together far sooner. And I would have, like, gotten actually to explore Zechariah's backstory a lot more, too, because that, it's like, you know, we know so little about him. He's just, you know, some hermit that lived in the woods because he wanted to. And he doesn't really like people very much, and he deals with some anger issues. That's pretty much what we know about Zechariah. Uh, other than the fact that he, at times, has gotten called a witch. Um, as for Jordan, you know, he's shy inventor guy, but at least we kind of know a little bit about his past, where, like, he had, you know, first a wife, maybe, or just someone to have, Cedric, uh, they, he realized he was actually gay and, like, masking, so they had a probably peaceful divorce. Uh, he got a, you know, he got a boyfriend then named Marcellus. Marcellus was not the best, so he eventually fled to Mythos to get away from Marcellus. You know, like, at least we knew that, right? So I would just, I probably should have taken on a lot more of their development myself and done it myself. I shouldn't have, like, left that to others to rely on. Um, but hey, at least with Easton and all the characters in Infiltration, I feel like they did get fleshed out away, or like in a way. Maybe we didn't learn all about their pasts, but as characters, we saw how they acted in certain situations and saw how they were. So I, I feel a little more confident in them. Lux is another area I really wish had been done differently. It's just there were so many rewrites. He got mishandled. He really did. He got mishandled, as did Medea in some ways, because Medea was meant to come right after. I'm very glad, though, that we brought her on Infiltration. I feel like it really gave her the spotlight she needed for her actions to hurt. I don't know if they would have hurt as badly if we hadn't have gotten that, right? What happens to the on that was supposed to be common one? Oh, wait, that thing. So, actually, Swan's, um... Me not being able to eat was a sudden decision that I made because I was like, her stomach, if like all of her internals, like most of them are like actually metal, she wouldn't have a stomach to be able to eat. But of course I've been showing myself eating and of course to fulfill the Minecraft thing, I have to eat. So it's kind of like, you know, that was a sudden thing I did one day. Swan has actually flipped between being a golem and a cyborg several times. Um, it's kind of a... Like, we'd settle on Golem, and then we'd go to Cyborg, and then we'd settle on Golem again. She was always going to run off of this, kind of. We settled that, finally. Um, but eventually, she kind of just, she's finally settled to Cyborg, which was because we just discovered um, Bobby's character, Seven, who we literally pulled out of the ocean and was a Golem. It would be kind of anticlimactic, because Seven was one of the first, like, Golems we really saw up close, at least in my perspective. So if suddenly we see this Golem, and then suddenly I learn that I'm a Golem, it's a little anticlimactic. The idea isn't as new and fresh. Well, back then we weren't certain I was a cyborg, and besides, there was no real way for that to come out. Because Swan's, like, ability is with this, right? It was kind of just not the... wasn't the best, right? It was kind of... Which, learning through it, she can't really do anything that will do anything to anyone. So it's kind of... Besides, I'd have that whole interaction almost go a little differently. And when Swan found out she was a cyborg, I'd actually have that go a little differently too. But again, don't have time to discuss that. That's uh, that's for another video where I headcanon my own character and how I wish everything had gone, you know? Alright, so, final question. What is a detail such moment in Mythos SMP you wish you'd had more time to elaborate on or have more present throughout Mythos Swan's journey? I'd say that have to be when Overcharge was introduced. I'm glad I got to introduce it and I love the way it was. It's, it's just like in that cinematic, we didn't really have time to stop and say, whoa, what the hell are you using, Victor? And him to be like, oh, this? 
why I'm just, you know, charging my cybernetics more. You know, I'm just strengthening myself. I'm overcharging. And then later for Swan to be like, well, I'm going to try that myself. And then she does it. It, it wasn't, it, I couldn't exactly easily, with the flow of the scene, put a label on it. So we didn't really, I was really concerned, actually, that people would think, oh, this is just Swan redirecting this. It looks so similar. The difference is that when Swan is redirecting this, it really only comes off of one hand or both. It depends on what she's, what she's doing it with. And yes, her eyes glow, but I imagine it's a duller glow, frankly. Now, when Swan is overcharging, when Swan is doing that, that is her fueling, like, send, Swan has a storage tank with some Vis, which is why when Vis runs out in the air, Swan isn't immediately doomed. She has at least maybe 30 minutes before what she has will fail her. And that's because there's a bit of a storage tank that stores some Vis. Now, when Swan overcharges, she depletes all of that at a much faster rate, which is the danger of it, because Swan only gets Vis through breathing. So when she breathes in, she gets some Vis. So she can only into, and you can't, like, she can't just inject herself with this. It doesn't work like that. So she gets the same replenishment rate, which is why eventually redirecting her own vis would cause some problems. It's just it takes a lot more to do that with redirecting because she's not using as much. But with overcharge, especially right now, or like where we ended, Swan can only go 100 or nothing. It's I compared it a little bit to like Deku's quirk or whatever in the beginning in My Hero Academia literally can go 100 or nothing. There is no in-between. Swan cannot control it to that, like, level yet. She can either give all of her vis, like, to everything all at once, or later, she maybe she could have learned to do it to just, like, maybe one thing. Maybe she could get some extra speed or something. She could eventually probably fine-tune it so that way she could use it longer, you know? Another thing that I wish is that we had longer for was fair as a character he was my absolute favorite and really that was like ending the swans like it was helping swan put everything in the past should it have happened sooner yes most fucking definitely swan should have put the past in the past far sooner but i think the way it was done eventually was very nice fair was essential to swan moving on as was easton and even medea actually and i love all of them uh but fair has been my just if you were like who's your favorite character fair he is the, when i wrote him it was so enjoyable. Genuinely, I just adore it. And, um, you can thank Royal in the chat for this one, but there's a song that I associate heavily with Fair now, uh, and I think it's a fair song to Swan, as in he's saying this stuff to Swan, and it's called Icarus. Um, I advise listening to it. I nearly cried. I nearly cried. I was like, oh no! But anyhow, I do think it's about time we go and join the others. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to go raid Rex, which I need to look up how his Twitch and shit is spelled, otherwise I'm going to raid someone completely fucking random. Are you sure it's Rex Viter? Like that? Okay. Slash raid Rex Viter. All right, let's get going, boys. One last look of Lyondell before my beloved home. All righty, boys. Raid! I shall see you over.